it's time once again for high school football here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Nothing. I got nothing. Uh oh, we're getting close. Got nothing, Jer. Thought I had something for a minute. Check one, two, nothing. You, you had it there for a second. You had it there for a minute. It's time once again for Atlantic Broadband Cable in cooperation with the South Union Township Supervisors presenting the South Union Township Sports Network. This evening, we will be streaming live on Facebook Live South Union Township from Mustang Field, home of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. The Mustangs take on the West Mifflin Titans in an important Big 8 Conference matchup. It's also homecoming here at Laurel Highlands, and we'll be having those festivities here on South Union Township Network. The homecoming court is now approaching across the field, and we'll turn it over to Jerry on the camera to pick up the homecoming activities. Yeah. 
Homecoming court for 2021 here at Mustang Field for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Always an exciting evening, Tony, for the girls and the entire student body. Homecoming, first home game here for the Mustangs on the new turf also. Really is homecoming, Gary, because they haven't played a home game in their first four. So all of a sudden they're coming in with brand new AstroTurf, a homecoming court. And a big crowd here tonight for homecoming. So it should be an interesting night here at Laurel Islands. And it's going to be a big game for both the Mustangs and the Titans. All these conference games have huge meaning. When you look at the future schedule for both the Mustangs and the Titans, it doesn't get any easier on both sides. So they can't afford to have a letdown on the Mustang side. And the Titans trying to get back to 500 in conference. Right. The thing of it is, Laurel Islands, it is a big game for them because they want to go into the game next week against Bell Vernon with some momentum. They're going to face three of the top five teams in Class 4A here within the next three weeks, so it's going to be an interesting run here for the Mustangs. So they really need to try to win this game and come out with a little momentum going into those three tough games ahead. So before we have the announcement of Homecoming Queen, we're going to step aside here for a few messages from our sponsors. Gary Frankhauser along with Tony Anola and Jerry Dupay. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. Here are our sponsors on the South Union Township Sports Network. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for making it possible for us to live stream these Mustang games throughout the season, and we'll be doing that all year for the Mustang Sports. Our sponsors, the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown, Agent David Hughes, United Bank here in Uniontown, Davis & Davis, Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess, CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwest Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown. Zebley, Mahalaf and White, Uniontown Business, Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. UPMC, Centers for Rehab Services in Uniontown on Wayland Smith Drive. Jim Burns, the director. So as the West Mifflin Titans finish up their warm-ups, the Mustang Band across the field, patiently waiting for the Titans to vacate the field so that we can Move ahead with the homecoming activities. Beautiful night here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Perfect night for football, and as we said, a lot of people came out to enjoy this game, Gary. We've got a great crowd, and that's what we were talking about earlier. Is it the 4-0 team? Is it homecoming, or is it everything above? But a lot of crowd and a lot of support here tonight for the Mustangs. Should be a big plus for the Mustangs. Ladies and gentlemen, this reminder, home field advantage for the first time this year. Mustangs with a huge win last week. Down Ringgold coming from behind, picking up the late fumble to take it in for the score and maintaining that undefeated record. Right, and we didn't think they were going to have a chance last week. Down, what, 29-17 with only about seven minutes to go. And the next thing you know, forced the turnover and then got the ball back and did a fantastic job in that fourth quarter to pull out a big road victory against a very good Ringgold team. So as we uh, still wait for West Mifflin to vacate the field, we're going to step aside here quickly. We'll be right back on the South Union Township Sports Network. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs in Uniontown. 
We'd like to wish the Laurel Hines boys football team and their coaches on having a successful football season this year. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Royal Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation, and there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. across the way from the beautiful <laughs> Corvettes that we saw here tonight, Tony. Yeah. I didn't know they got those all out of your garage. Uh, yeah, well, I lent it out at least for a night, <laughs> <laughs> especially on homecoming gear. <laughs> I know one thing, we're getting invaded here. we got drones everywhere in the air. Yeah, could, I'm just wondering if there's FAA clearance. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, they might said need an air traffic controller. <laughs> well, Soup's out there. He can handle that. Yeah. So the uh, administration from the high school will be participating as well as the Aero Air Force ROTC. Yeah. 
gentlemen, Laurel Highlands High School is pleased to present to all of you in attendance tonight the 2021 Homecoming Court. We're, we're going to start tonight with welcoming back our 2020 Homecoming Queen, Sherry Finerski. Sherry is the daughter of Stephanie and Bill Will Finerski. She is being escorted by senior Tyler Kalich. Son of Brandy and Matthew Kalich. Melina 
Sabatini. Daughter of April and Dominic Sabatini. She is being escorted by Howard the Man McManus, son of Nicole and James McManus. at the 2021 homecoming ceremonies here at Mustang Field on the campus at Laurel Highlands. The ROTC is now presenting the colors for our national anthem.
outstanding rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. We're just about ready for high school football. We will have the coin toss and the final warm-ups. Gary Frankhauser along with Jerry Dupay and Tony Anula will be right back with the starting lineups. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days. At life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service. Real service. From a person you know, and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank. At your service. Getting collection calls, finding bills in the mail you can't pay. Are you expecting shutoff or foreclosure notices? If you're in financial trouble, you need to know that there is help under the law that will help protect you and your assets. Hi, this is attorney Chuck Zebley with Zebley Mahal and White. Allow us to help you protect yourself. If you're in debt and have no way out, let us help you understand your options under the federal bankruptcy laws. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road. For many, it's a fresh start and a new beginning. So give our office a call today, 724-439-9200. Or visit our website at zeblaw.com. Zebly Mahal of White in Uniontown. Local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Zebly Mahal of White. It's gonna be all, it's gonna be all. Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not... Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Law Lions boys football team and their coaches on having a successful football season this year. Mustang Field. The Mustangs out on the field on the near side in their all blue home uniforms. Tony, let's take a look at. <laughs> Starting lineups. First for the uh, West Mifflin Titans on offense. All right, for the Titans offensively at left tackle will be Rico Steele, a 6'4, 305 pound sophomore. Left guard will be Braden Walker, a 6'2, 245 pound sophomore. Number 52 at center, Carson Novacell, a 6'2", 250-pound senior. Right guard, Anthony Trunzo, a 6'2", 255-pound junior. And at right tackle, Jaden Brown Demery, a 6'3", 305-pound freshman. The tight end is Kiwan Shields, a 5'11", 220-pound sophomore. At the wideout spot will be Tajir Williams, a 5'11", 165-pound junior. Flanker will be Tyrese Ogletree, a 5'7", 160-pound senior. The split end will be Peyton Uhas, a 5'11", 160-pound junior. The fullback today will be James Fulmore, a 6'2", 185-pound junior. Starting at tailback today will be Tyrell Ogletree, a 5'10", 175-pound junior and a three-year starter for the Titans. And starting at quarterback today will be Tayshawn McMillan, a 6'1", 175-pound junior. And here come the Titans out onto the field with their white jerseys, yellow pants, and yellow helmets. Defensively for the Mustangs. For the Mustangs defensively, starting at left end will be Caden Friel, a 6'3", 230-pound junior. Left tackle will be John Deke, a 5'10", 170-pound sophomore. At the nose tackle will be Caleb Glebus, a 5'11", 300-pound senior. 
At the right end will be A.J. Sumter, a 6'2", 230-pound senior. The linebacker spots, the outside linebacker will be Brian Yorchek, a 5'10", 190-pound senior. At the other outside linebacker spot will be Ben Wilson, a 5'10", 185-pound junior. Middle linebacker today will be Dan Carney, a 5'8", 170-pound senior. The cornerbacks for the Mustangs tonight, DeMonte Kiss, 5'11", 155-pound senior, and Rodney Gallagher, a 5'11", 170-pound junior. Strong safety will be Tajay Hooper, a 5'10", 165-pound senior. And the free safety tonight for the Mustangs will be Jaden Pratt, a 6'3", 190-pound senior for the Mustangs. And Pratt with that all-important fumble rick strip and recovery to allow the Mustangs to pull off that win at Ringgold last week. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Titans will attack the Mustangs here this evening, Tony. They had to get that film with Ringgold and the success that the Rams had going off tackle has to be something that the Mustangs have to be ready to defend here this evening. Well, and the thing about it is, Gary, this Titan offensive line comes in averaging 275 pounds a man. So they got a lot of beef up front. And as you said, running off right tackle, you got Jaden Brown to marry over there. He's 6'3", 305-pound freshman. And the left tackle, Rico Steele, a 6'4", 305-pound sophomore. So you got a lot of size. So the Mustangs going to have to fill a lot of gaps and beat a lot of big fellas on that offensive line tonight. Let's see if the Mustang defense can respond uh, and possibly put a few extra guys in the box to face that running attack for West Mifflin. Captains are out on the field now shaking hands, and uh, we'll have the coin toss and see how we're going to proceed here. The lights are on. We're ready for high school football, Tony. <laughs> ready to go, Gary, and ready for a good game. As we said, West Mifflin, always a talented team, and the Mustangs can't relax, even though the Titans are 1-3 and three here so far this year. The Mustangs have won the toss and have elected to receive. They'll be going left to right on your Facebook live streaming screen. And the West Mifflin Titans will be defending the north end zone. Well, the Mustangs, if they can get off to a good start here. I don't expect West Mifflin to pass a lot here tonight, although they have put the ball up in the air a couple times in the first three games, but not a whole lot. They're really pretty much a rushing team and as we said, especially coming in with Ogletree, the three-year starter, and he had a good game last year against the Mustangs with 133 yards rushing in that 27-20 win by the Titans. And you got to believe, as we said earlier, that um, scouting report on the Ringgold game showed the success they had on the ground against the Mustang defense. And uh, I would imagine that West Mifflin's going to put them to the test here again until they stop them. Well, they had an extremely tough time, you're right, last week stopping Ringgold. I mean, Ringgold, six, seven yards at a clip without a problem. And the Mustangs, as we said, down going into the fourth quarter and just a fantastic comeback and a big win for them. So they're, they're riding high on a lot of momentum here tonight. They're doing the kicking for West Mifflin, number 13, Nick Kasuda, junior and deep for the Mustangs, Rodney Gallagher. Here we go. Run up in the kick, and it's going to be taken at about the 15 by Gallagher. He's going to try to find some room, and he's going to spin his way through a few tacklers out to about the 26-yard line. Good coverage there by the West Mifflin Titans. will set up the Mustangs first and 10 at the 26-yard line. And Gallagher coming out, starting at quarterback again for the fourth game, Gary. He comes in with 33 for 48 passing for 459 yards. Six touchdowns and two interceptions in the first four games for the Mustangs. Some very capable receivers on the Mustangs side of the ball with DeShields, Pratt, Chambers. Got a lot of talent, no doubt. So Rodney will go in the shotgun. No Eric Allen here tonight, and that's going to be a nice run off right tackle by number seven, Ben Wilson. As we said, Eric Allen out with the injury. And nice run by Wilson on first down, pick up of seven. Nice job is right. And as you said, Wilson with big shoes to fill. Eric Allen out injured tonight. He's averaging 82 yards rushing in the first four games for the Mustangs. So 
Wilson stepping in and starting off well with a quick seven-yard burst. It's going to be Wilson again now trying to go around the left side, and he's going to hit resistance and probably lose a yard on this carry. Coming in there making the tackle for West Mifflin. Looked like number four, it's Tyler Williams. So Williams able to step in that gap, trying to run a little bit of sweep around the left side there, but Wilson with no running room whatsoever. Jammer Hill also number seven over there. I might have had that number wrong. So big, first, big third down here early for the Mustangs. Now third and five on a loss of two on that play. Rodney sends a man in motion. That's Pratt. He'll set up as the wing to the right. Three receivers, and it's going to be Wilson again, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Again in there for the tackle number seven, Jammer Hill. So the Mustangs three and out on their first possession. And not a whole lot of creativity in that first set of downs there, Gary. Ran Wilson three times. Thought actually Gallagher might put that ball up with third down and five, but no such luck. So now it's going to bring in the punter. And that's going to be Diamond. Ben Diamond. Diamond coming in, averaging 35 yards a punt. And deep for West Mifflin. That looks like looks like 34. It looks like Ogletree back there, and it is Tyrell Ogletree. Diamond with a tail dragger. That's going to take a Mustang bounce into West Mifflin territory inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. So pretty good punt there by Diamond. Will give West Mifflin their first opportunity on offense. And the Mustang defense looking to see if they're up to the task. And we can set the defense real quick for you. The ends, as we said, Caden Friel. Left defensive end, A.J. Sumter, right defensive end. Nose tackle was Caleb Glebus. Tackle was John Deke, linebackers Ben Wilson and Brian Yorchek on the outside, Carney on the inside. Corners, Rodney Gallagher and DeMonte Kiss. Strong safety, Tajay Hooper and the free safety, Jaden Pratt. They do run a lot of men in and out on the defensive side for the Mustangs, so we will see a lot of different bases as the Mustangs come in with a front four now. A little bit different look, and it's – up the middle, but there's a flag on the play, and Mustang defense drives the runner back, trying to pick up who that runner was, but that tackle is. there was bitten made by um, number 13. That's DeMonte Kiss. Kiss with some help from Pratt, and let's see what they're going to do. Looks like they're going to mark it off against West Mifflin and see what the call is. So no run on the play. It's still going to be first down and probably 15. Yep. Could have been a uh, false start. Yeah, so they That's called exactly a false start. That's exactly correct. Yep, so they called a false start. So West Mifflin wiping off that short gain. Pushes it back to the 29-yard line. So it's gonna Mustangs make. in a 4-5 defense now, daring them to pass it. But this is going to be a nice tackle there by Pratt on the run there by Delron. Right? Yeah, Delron White. And he's going to probably lose or no gain on the play back to the 29. And Pratt looks like he came out to play, stepped in on both of those plays, although one didn't count, but stepped in and filled that gap pretty well. It looked like Coming White had some room the on the outside. From yeah, a strong safety position left side and inside out makes that tackle. So good speed to the ball there by the Mustang defense. Now Pratt. West Mifflin will come out in double twin receivers. And now we got a whistle. Timeout. Timeout called by West Mifflin. Early timeout with 8.59 to go here in the first. West Mifflin facing a second down and 15. We're just underway here at Mustang Field. Homecoming festivities always exciting with a huge crowd here tonight, Tony. It is a huge crowd, Gary. I'm sure the uh – 50-50 will look good in the coffers here for the yeah. boosters tonight. That's a good point. We might have to get somebody to come up here and sell us some tickets. Yeah, we're going to be on the lookout, that's for sure, because you know it's going to be a decent one. Not that we're going to hit, though. <laughs> 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 
Mustang defense now coming back. Up. Good luck to the Rawhines Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Now looking deep, he's going to tuck it now and try to get that first down on his own, but the Mustang defense is going to stop him for a gain of about seven, tucking it in there for West Mifflin, the quarterback, number five, Tayshawn McMillan. Stopped there by four or five Mustangs. Yeah, McMillan had to bring that down. Good defensive coverage in the backfield, defensive backfield there by the Mustangs. Had no place to go with it. I think Carney was in on that, and your check. Also in on the tackle. All the leading tacklers for the Mustangs. Carney having a fantastic season defensively for the Mustangs. Another big third down for West Mifflin this time. They send three receivers out wide to the right, one to the near side, one on one here with Rodney Gallagher. Now rolling right, rolling, looking under some pressure again, and he's going to be out of that pressure, but wow. brought down at the 30-yard line for a loss on the play of about six. Good pursuit there by the Mustang defense again. That looked like, was it Hunter Hines? It was Hunter Hines is right. Nice, able to get in that backfield. Missed the tackle, but was able to slow up McMillan long enough for the Mustangs to come in and to make a big play on a nice six-yard loss. For all his friends to show up for That's the tackle. Right. We're going to punt. Fourth down and 15. That's going to be Casuto. He does everything. Oh, bad snap. But he is blocked, blocked by the Mustangs and caught at about the 19-yard line. So that was a snap that was wide right, and the Mustangs in there quickly to block the punt. We'll have to look at the replay to see who made that block. I think it was actually your chick. Your chick in there block. on the block and picked up. Out of the air by the Mustang special team. Sets them up deep in West Mifflin territory at the 17-yard line. And as you Looks like DeMonte Kiss was the one who came down with it. But a big play. And special teams, like Soup would say, he doesn't like punting in high school football, but West Mifflin really didn't have a chance there. Three receivers now wide right. Looks like Mustangs may go to the end zone early. There's a pass out here to Pratt. Can he make one man miss? He does, and powers his way inside the 15 to about the 14. They're going to set it at the right at the 15-yard line, so that's going to be a four-yard pickup on the pass from Gallagher to Pratt. Pratt looked like he had a little running room there at first, but unable to shake the defenders for West Mifflin, so nice play there to hold him to only a three-yard gain. Showed some power, too, once he did meet resistance. So now second and six at the 15. Gallagher. And now what do we have? It's going to be a motion it. against the Mustangs, I get, I think. No, it's got to be. Yep. And you can't have those mistakes when you're down in scoring territory. Tajai Hooper was in motion, but that's the call was on the offensive line. Yeah, it looked like. Wasn't exactly sure who jumped, but you're right. Looked like the right side of the offensive line made a quick move, and they got caught. So that negates the four-yard run, makes it second down and 11, all the way back out to the 20. Clock running at 6.22 to go here in the first. Mustangs come out in a tight formation this time. And now what do we have? Timeout called by Laurel Highlands. Coach Colasar did not like the look. He calls timeout. 6-12 to go here in the first. Gary Frank Hauser along with Tony Anula will be right back on the South Union Township Sports Network. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times. 
and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalib & White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on... Rodney back, looking in the end zone, tries to go to his man in the end zone, deep and knocked away at the last minute on a nice defensive play back there, trying to hit the shields in the end zone, and that was... thought it was Ogletree. 34 back there. Yeah, nice play there, though. Just knocked it away. The shields didn't high point that one. No, you know he what? He waited for it to come into his body, <laughs> exactly. and he needed to get up high and get over that defender to make that catch, but nice pass. And that was Ogletree back there. So the Mustangs here need to come out of this with some points after the big block. Rodney's going to look, 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 and he's going to be hit from behind, and he's going to have to just carry it out of bounds. And that's tough tackle there as he was pile drive, now and now we got penalty. a flag. And that's, and a, that's a situation wow. where you had him stopped, and now you're going to get called for an unsportsmanlike conduct, and you're going to give the Mustangs the wow. ball back with a first down. That's huge. Coaching staff for West Mifflin has got to be beside themselves. Rod Steele across the way just screaming at his squad. That's going to be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. So it's going to put them at the nine-yard line. What a break for the Mustangs. Huge break. That's their first first down of the night. But in that situation. By a penalty. Yeah, and the thing of it is, I mean, they had them stopped. Here it is. Yeah. And you just, you got to think. You can't celebrate. Okay, you made a tackle. Big deal. Get off the field. Exactly. Spread out the offensive uh, receivers now. Send Kiss in motion. Draws the West Mifflin Titans off. And shades of last week, Tony, when Rodney Gallagher drew the Ringo Rams off at least five times. <laughs> I think four of them for first downs. That's exactly what I was going to say, Gary. I was going to say four for first downs, and they, he did it at the crucial time. And now here all of a sudden you got 20 yards worth of penalties and the Mustangs at the inside the five at close to the four-yard line at first and goal. Their best offensive plays were penalties. Yeah. To Rodney at the five with Hooper left. Now looking, looking, has a man down the flat and then catch, and is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Laurel Highlands, number 13, DeMonte Kiss on the little flat pattern. He comes in motion and extends the defense towards the pylon, steps right inside the pylon for the Mustang touchdown from five yards out. And a nice play. Gallagher rolling to his left and found a wide open kiss, and he just used his might to get in there. I thought he was actually going to be stopped short, but able to sneak the ball over the end zone, um, over the end line. And pick up a touchdown for the Mustangs. Radcliffe with the kick, and it is good. So with 5.44 to go here in the first, the Mustangs take the early lead off of the block kick. We'll be right back. 7-0 Mustangs here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Watching Sam Davis apply his craft was amazing. Everyone showed him so much respect. Watching Sam work the courtroom was like watching Michael Jordan with the game tied and eight seconds left. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured in an auto accident, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-437. 2799. So a four play, 18 yard drive, taking up a minute 30 seconds, completely helped by an unsportsmanlike penalty against West Mifflin that set the Mustangs up with goal to go. But give them credit, they were able to push it in, and Radcliffe will kick it away. Here's the kick. Radcliffe sends it. Down the sideline, it's going to be out of bounds, and that's going to set up West Mifflin at the 35-yard line. We saw Radcliffe do that at Ringgold, and not what coaching staff wants to see there. That gives a immediate 35-yard gain. Or yeah. I'm sorry, 
for the um, West Mifflin Titans. And West so they'll Mifflin. bring it on out and set it at the 35. Mustang defense in their second opportunity against the West Mifflin offense. Now with the seven to nothing lead. You know, held him to three and out in that first series of downs. And again, aided by a penalty in that as well with the false start that made it first and 15 for West Mifflin on that first possession. Mustangs come out in a new look defense, 44 with 45 actually with four down linemen and five linebackers about three yards deep. Now they're in the 44, changed up again, run up the middle and running into resistance after about a three yard gain. Who was that carry, Tone? I think it was Ogletree to be honest with you. He announced it as white, but I think it was Ogletree. So we're gonna give him four three on yards. that play. Yeah. Host of Mustangs there in that defensive secondary or linebackers. Carney again in there. Yeah, your check was your also check. in to make that tackle. So second and six. Eye backfield now. Power running, and that's going to be the fullback trying to get outside, and he does. Nice, nice run. Nice gainer there by the fullback, and I think that's number three. It looked like three, Del Rico White. Gets around right in for a nice gainer on second down of about eight. Yeah, nice run there. Just a little power formation and did a good job. So first down at midfield. Back to the shotgun formation for West Mifflin. Wide receiver to the near side, now a flag, and what do we got? That's on the Mustangs, I believe, offside. Yeah, it looks like they might have jumped there, Gear. So now they're aiding they are. the Titans. That's going to be a first and five now. Second penalty on the Mustangs for a total of 10 yards here tonight. Clock running now with 4.27 to go inside Mustang territory at the 45-yard line. And as we said, this big offensive line just waiting to open some holes for these talented West Mifflin running backs. Triple receivers to the right. Now this is Ogletree to the right. He cuts it up, and he has room across the 40, inside the 40, to about the 37-yard line. So that's going to be a 7-yard pickup or 8-yard pickup for number 34 for West Mifflin, Tyrell Ogletree. First and 10 first now at the 36-yard line. So a little too much on the ground in this drive if you're the Mustang defense. Now they're trying to load up on the line here, as we said, because of the offensive line being so big for West Mifflin. Here's the fullback. Nothing doing this time. The interior line for the Mustangs, including your check in there and up off the bottom of the pal is number 54 for the Mustangs. That's Barton. Barton, yeah, nice play there. So holds White to one yard. Second and 10. Yeah, just nice job there is right by the linebackers just to step in and fill that gap. Looked like White might have a little bit of room, but that closed up pretty quickly by the Mustang defense. They're going to Ogletree on that sweep to the right now. Student body right, pretty much. And decent gain that time by Ogletree. Pushed out of bounds on the left side there by Kiss. Pratt and Kiss. Now yeah. Pratt's going to come to the sideline. Looks like he might have an equipment issue. Yeah, looking for a, maybe a chin strap problem or something there. Gain of four. Puts West Mifflin in a third and five. Long five. Got to believe they're in four down territory at this point. Oh, yeah. You don't know what kind of field goal kicker they have, but obviously they're not going to try to punt from down here. Especially after that last effort. <laughs> That's exactly right. Third and five back. Oh, now what do we have? Offside, and the Mustangs will give them a free five. Yeah, it looked like 
Looked like wow. that was Johnny Deke who jumped. <laughs> Taste of their own medicine there. Every bit of it. And that's going to make it third and very short. That's going to be, yeah, I was going to say it's close. Not a first down, but made it much more manageable now. So now a short. You know, on that defensive line, you just have to watch the ball. Can't listen to that hard count. No. Well, I think what happened was once he saw the guy in motion, I think he just jumped <laughs> thinking he was going to cut towards the line of scrimmage. Now up the middle, which he's going to be hit Ooh. at the line, but I think he may have fell forward for the first down. A little extra curricular activity there, but Ogletree hit by your check. And let's see, did he make the first down? They're going to check it out and say no. Wow. He did not. So no gain. And actually, I thought he got the first down when your check spun him yeah. to make the tackle. Thought he actually threw him ahead of the pack. Contact must have been in the backfield. Fourth and about a half a yard. And the Mustangs looking for a huge stop here. And your check, as we said, I thought he actually flung Ogletree ahead for a first down. but And there's a jump. Mustangs Look, again? No, it's going to be the... Oh, Looked like the right West guard Mifflin for West Mifflin. It. Wow. So number. So penalties playing a huge part of this first quarter, Tony. And that's a huge penalty on West Mifflin with a fourth and one. Now they're fourth and five, a little more than five. And, and manageable, unmanageable. Manageable, uh, unmanageable. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, you go from go from a big third down, a third down and probably less than a yard. Now all of a sudden you're going to go down to, I'm sorry, a fourth down in less than a yard. Now you're going to go to a fourth and six, and it looked like Anthony Trunzo just jumped the gun there for West Mifflin. No, and it falls on the turf. No. Nope. No, I thought it was too. A little fake. So Ogletree. Trickeration there, but Ogletree had it, and that's going to turn the ball over. A little curious call there going right up the middle on fourth and six. But. The Mustangs were up to the task, and they're going to take over at their own 33-yard line. We're sneaking up on the end of the first quarter here, Gary. Only 46 seconds to go. Fast-moving first quarter with a lot of running by both squads. A lot of running, and the thing of it is, the ball was only put up in the air three times, and that was all by the Mustangs. Gallagher with Wilson to his right. And there's going to be Gallagher himself, and he's in open field. Wow. Shoestring tackle there, saved a touchdown. And that was by number 19 for West Mifflin. That's Tyrese Ogletree. That must be the brother of Tyrell. Yes. <laughs> but that was a nice shoestring tackle that saved a big gainer, but nine-yard gain for Gallagher sets up second and one at the 42. I'll tell you what, he did a nice job there, pulling that ball out of Kiss's stomach. And it really nice fake, ball fake by Rod. He's going to take it himself this time, and he's going to be Fumble. Hit. Oh, he picked it up himself, and he oh, able wow. to squirt through. Amazing. Like magic. <laughs> now you have me, now you don't. Gets the first down after uh, – Fumble, he picks it up, gets the first down, and that's the end of the first quarter with Laurel Highlands on top, 7 to nothing. When we come back, they'll have it first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Have you ever felt something stick in your chest when swallowing? This can be caused by a narrowing in your esophagus from inflammation, scar tissue, or rarely a tumor. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologist, Dr. Ruthart Calabrese Hoppy and I specialize in the care of swallowing disorders. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialist.com. to be the best versions of themselves at all times. Debo was a very hardworking man who can be found on the field early in the morning or late in the evening, making sure the field was in the best shape possible for his team. 
He was the very definition of selflessness and made sure that everyone else could succeed before thinking of himself. <coughs> Joining us this evening are members of the B. Berry family, his wife, Missy, his daughter, Shaley, and husband, Jack, and granddaughter, Charlotte, and Sydney. For the past two weeks, our student body has fundraised for the DeBerry family, purchasing purple ribbons to wear tonight in honor of Debo. If you look over in the Laurel Highland student section, you'll see many of the students wearing those pins in memory of Scott. The senior baseball players have also purchased flowers and a care package for the family in recognition of Coach DeBerry's tremendous effect that he has had on these young men for the rest of their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of Coach Dewberry, please join me in a round of applause for our student body for making this part. And thank you for coming out tonight to celebrate the life and legacy of people. Thank you. We're back after the nice tribute there to Laurel Highlands baseball coach, D. Barry, and uh, everything that was said in the announcement was absolutely true. Scotty was a good guy. He knew a lot of baseball, too, and a good coach for the Mustangs and just lost his battle to cancer here about a month and a half ago. And sorry to see that at such a young age, especially, what, 52 years old and couple grandkids and everything but obviously being recognized here tonight and baseball program and the Mustangs overall are going to miss him so back to football action at the beginning of the second quarter packed house here at Mustang Field watching the Mustangs now take over first and 10 at the Mustang 47 yard line Trip receivers to the right for the Mustangs. Chambers down here one-on-one. -on -one. Good opportunity with his athletic ability. Rolling right is Gallagher looking. He needs to get rid of it. Does and throws it away smartly. So eliminates the huge loss. And that's going to be out of bounds. Incomplete intended for Hooper. But that was just a throwaway by Rodney. It was just a throwaway. And he was being chased by Fulmore on the side there, and he just really had great pressure. Gallagher couldn't do anything at all there, just had to throw it out of bounds, good make sure it wasn't intercepted. Good contain there by the West Mifflin defense, not allowing Rodney to tuck it down and take off. Second and 10 now, same formation for the Mustangs. Fake handoff now, pass out here to Hooper, and he's going to be hit for a big loss. Nice. Decipher there on the defensive side, and that's number 10 for West Mifflin. And that's Andre Spencer with a huge defensive play, pushing the Mustangs back to their own 38-yard line, now facing third and about 15. Yeah, I'm sorry, say, 20. I was going to say 20. So that, so that loss right there, big for the Mustangs. You don't like those negative plays. No. That actually takes Gallagher into minus yardage. Passing-wise, he's three for five, but minus one. And now Rodney is going to tuck it down and get his feet under him. I, mean, I think he might have been over the line that time. And there's a catch. Was he over the line? No, no say flag. No. Wow. And toe <laughs> dance down the left sideline there by Chambers as he was able to pull that in. Keep both feet in bounds at the 35. Rodney stumbling to his left, able to gain his feet, and we thought he might just tuck it in. But as he approached the line of scrimmage, saw Chambers and hit him for the big first down. Quick 27-yard gain yeah, on that pass. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah. And I, did th I thought he was over the line of scrimmage as well, Gary. I thought he threw that ball for about the 40-yard line. Now here's Pratt. Got it, gets one block, but Ooh. he's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. Big hit there by the Titan defender. Stepping up again, number 10, that's Andre Spencer. Two big defensive plays in this series. 
Gain of about a half a yard. Give him one. And we'll be generous and give him one is right, but they didn't get very far there. They bottled that sweep up in a heartbeat. Pratt trying to get outside, just couldn't get there. Running horizontally, just could not find a seam to cut it upfield. Now three receivers to the left. Gallagher rolling left, rolling left. Now he's in trouble. He'll have to tuck it down. That has a man deep, and that's going to be oh. – Oh, dropped at the last minute by Hooper. He had it for a second, but defending back there, number five by Tayshawn McMillan in the hands of Hooper. That's one he'll catch nine times out of ten. I would agree. And actually, the only bad thing about that play was it looked like Gallagher underthrew him. He had to come back to the ball a little bit. You're right. And it gave the Titan defenders time to knock that pass away. He had a couple steps. If he had led him toward the end zone, it could have been a much easier catch. He would have walked in. So now third and 10. Handoff inside, and that's going to be, I believe, Lay number you. 18. I think it's Layu, isn't it? Or no, it's Carney. You're right. Carney. 18. So he stepped in at fullback, and that's going to bring up a fourth down and about six. Make it seven. Ogletree on the tackle. But it's four down territory for the Mustangs now is a little bit out of the range of uh, Radcliffe. That would be about a 48 yarder. Yeah, and a little bit is right. He has kicked a 35-yarder here this year, but a little bit steep for him out there. Mustangs reset. Gallagher back. Pass. Oh, tried the uh, quick out, and the pass was incomplete. Gallagher on the timing pattern did not have the attention there of the shields as he threw it before the break, and West Mifflin will take over on downs. I don't know why the clock's running. The clock should be stopped. That's for sure. Well, there it is. Yeah, but it, they, I think they're going to reset off. it. Yeah, I think they're going to reset it to about 9.24, to be honest or with you. Or just not start it for about 10 yeah. seconds. That's it. So, 9.21, they're railing. Actually thought it was a little bit more than that. Well, let's see. The lights went out on Broadway. <laughs> but now it's 9-12. They're going to just let it sit for 10 seconds, I'll bet. And there's a flag. And that's going to stop the clock again. And a fumble. fumble. Mustangs come up with wow. it, and Jorchek is running toward the bench, and now another flag. I hope it's not an unsportsmanlike against the Mustangs after the play, but it very well could be. I think it is going to be, Gare. So Coach Colasar beside himself out there. There was an original flag on the play from the get-go, but the fumble on the play picked up by your check, and once he had the ball, the exuberant Mustangs, I think, committed an unsportsmanlike conduct. So that's, that's going to push him back 15. So the play was a fumble, no yards. The Mustangs pick it up, and now they're going to be Marked back 15. They picked it up at the original line of scrimmage at the 32. But now the Mustangs are going to have to walk backwards here. They're going to step it off, I believe. Yeah, and let's see what happens here. After the fumble. They're definitely going to push him back 15. It's a personal foul. Dead ball personal foul, too, which... Completely uncalled for. Completely uncalled for him. We talked about that with West Mifflin after they had stopped Laurel Highlands on fourth down. And now all of a sudden, they're going to mark off 15 and take it back to the 48-yard line. Coach Colasar is going to go down here and stand by himself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to cool off a little <laughs> bit there, I'm sure. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the Mustangs still with good field position at the 48, but now with a chance to extend this 7-0 lead. Just one play by West Mifflin gives it back, and this is going to be Rodney to the right side, cuts inside, and dives ahead to the 40. So a gain of eight sets up second down and two. Got to give him as many opportunities as you can with the ball. Well, you do, and especially with Eric Allen being out of the game. As we said, Gary, he came in averaging 82 yards, and Allen out with an injury. So that's a big loss for the Mustangs. 
Gallagher so far four carries for 23 yards. On those plays, you're rarely going to have anything negative. They gave him seven, so he must have had a knee down at the 39. I'm sorry, 41. Now, let's see what they got here. Trips I'm to the left. Looks like Carney's going to get the call inside, and he's going to have the first down. Nice run. Don't Hold fumble. Hold on to that ball. Now, it looks like he did put it on the turf, but recovered by the Mustangs. So Carney. 51 for the Mustangs with the recovery. Sumter, that's a first down. So Mustangs lucky there not to turn it back to the West Mifflin Titans. First down at the 36 or 37. Yeah, we're going to say 36. They're saying Gallagher 35. Gallagher goes back, has a man open. This is Pratt, makes one man miss and gets down inside the 20 to about the 19. He's going to mark it right at the 20, I believe. So nice design play there by the Mustangs at Colasar. Pratt just kind of held himself back and watched the outside receivers take the defense deep. And once he did that, it cleared a path down to the 20-yard line. And a nice play, too. Pratt just kind of stepped back, took that pass. And shook the one defender and picked up 15 quick Gallagher yards. Gallagher now has a man wide open. This is Kiss down to the five, inside the five to the three-yard line. So DeMonte Kiss with another opportunity to take it in. So Gallagher from the 20 down to the three. And Kiss getting a lot of action here tonight. He caught that touchdown pass earlier. Yeah, we haven't seen him much on offense so far this season. No. Gallagher. He's going to take it himself up the middle, down to the one, and he stopped. Half yard line. And a good try there by Gain Gallagher. Of two and a half. And they just run up to the line now, and looks like Gallagher is going to get up under center. He's going to push ahead. He's 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 in. Dives into the left, kind of bounces off his offensive line, falls to the left with the one yard touchdown run by Rodney Gallagher. Mustangs take advantage again of the miscue by West Mifflin, this time by way of fumble. Convert for the Mustang touchdown. Radcliffe on for the extra point. Snaps good, hold good, kick up, and good. So. Radcliffe adds the extra point, 14-0. Laurel Highlands on top, 7.03 to go here from Mustang Field. Gary Frankhauser with Tony Anula and Jerry Dupay. We'll be right back. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. And there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Here we go, Mustangs stretching out to a 14 to nothing lead here in the first half. Taking advantage of two miscues by West Mifflin, one on the block punt and the second time on the fumble. This drive was a six play, 48 yard drive, taking up two minutes and four seconds, highlighted by the 17 yard pass from Gallagher to Kiss. Gallagher taking it in and Radcliffe now kicks this one on the ground and that's gonna be picked up at about the 15 and out to about the 28, bouncing off tacklers, wow. still on his feet. What a Determined run. Determined run that time by number one. It's Delron White. Delron White gets it out to the 35-yard line. Nice run, boy. He fought to get those yards. Mustangs uh, had him short of the 30, but he just bounced off and kept moving. Kept moving, kept those legs a-churning, and they're going to mark it at the 35. So now... The Titans looking to try to get some offense started here. Same as that out-of-bounds kick. So. Yeah, true. Right now only 
29 yards of total offense here in this first half for the Titans. 6.52 to go. And looking to get something started here. Ogletree in the backfield. And he has some room, but nice, nice tackle there on the outside. And that was Kiss, I believe. That's so he's Hooper. every. Oh, Hooper, that's, that's right. Hooper stepped up, yeah, but they got a penalty flag. You got to have a hold. You take that penalty or take the loss on the run? It looks, looks, I, it looks like they are going to take the penalty. It's a 10 yarder, so I have to agree with that. Yeah, I would too. That's five penalties already against West Mifflin. For a total of 33 yards. So now makes it first and 20, Gear. All the way back to the 22-yard line. So behind the chains, West Mifflin comes up with a first and 20. Back goes quarterback, and he gets it out in the flat, short one. And that might be a drag out of bounds over there again. That time. To Spencer. Spencer with the catch, but short gain of about four. Taken down there by the Mustang defender. I look like that was Hooper over there again. Hooper's played a nice game so far. So we're going to give him four yards on that catch. That's the first completion for West Mifflin, the first pass attempt as well in this game. Straight back is the pass, and here's over the middle, and Mustang Whoa. defender comes up quickly. That's your check. Wow. Puts a hit on him at the 26-yard line. Actually, the 25. Where they're going to mark it back at the 24. No gain. Wow. And your check just came up and leveled Carlos Scott. Laid the wood. Yes, he did. So now all of a sudden, still third and 20. Actually, it should be about, what, third? 21. Yeah. So let's see what they can do here. Mustangs trying to come up with another big defensive stand, closing in on five minutes to go here in this second quarter. Wide outs to both sides. Straight back drop. Now he has Got a room. lot of room. A lot of far to go, though, so... Good nice. defense there by Rodney Gallagher to hold it to a minimal gain of about nine. So that's acceptable on third and 20. Exactly right. Gallagher with a nice shoestring tackle there just came up and made a nice stop. So now what do you do? We've seen the Titans try to punt once. There was a bad snap. Are they going to send in they do, and the it, punter again? Mustangs with another opportunity here to put pressure on the punt as a Titans punt team is very slow getting on the field. Yeah, it's like a little confused. He's still got 13 on the play clock. Another There's snap that's bad. Wow, but he gets it away. Now that's going to roll in favor of West Mifflin, but Mustangs will have to keep an eye on that. Any future punts, those snaps are less than ideal. Yeah. I was going to say we're not sure if it was Forsthofer or Novacell, but that took a long time to get there. And actually, the Mustangs probably had another chance to block that one if they could have made a little headway. So now they're going to take over on what their own 34-yard line. That's correct. So the 34 with 3:58 to go. Plenty of time here in the first half to see if the Mustangs can add to a 14 to nothing lead. Again, the penalties hurt the Titans again on that set of downs. Three receivers to the near side. One wide right. Gallagher going to hand fake the handoff and take it himself up the middle. And it's just positive yards at all times with Rodney Gallagher. Looks like he's stopped at the point of attack and just spins away. Gain of about five. Yeah, we're going to give him five there. And again, and Gallagher like with, nothing. Yeah, with a great ball fake. Actually thought he handed it to the up back. 
that Gallagher able to fight through and pick up yards. He's got seven carries for 31 yards and a touchdown here in his first half for the Mustangs. So we got double receivers now to both sides. Second down and five. Pratt in motion, and they fake it to him again, and Gallagher's going to be caught for a loss this time. Nice play there by the defense for West Mifflin, Jammer Hill. And Gallagher, as you said, he was going to hand that on the inside handoff to Pratt. I think he saw Pratt had nowhere to go and <laughs> just did. pulled it down <laughs> yes, smartly. Smart play by Rod. Turned a five-yard loss into a no gain. And beats losing yardage, that's for sure. So now third and a manageable five. Let's see what the Mustangs do here. Starting that tight set, and then they re-establish themselves wide. Gallagher, straight back, straight looking, looking. Now under pressure, rolls to his left. Going to let it go, and that's going to be Chambers. incomplete. Intended for Chambers, but nice defense that time by Ogletree. Ogletree had blanket coverage that time on Chambers and probably wouldn't have been enough for the first down anyway. No, he had to come back for it. I think he would have been stopped about three yards short. So now that's going to bring in Ben Diamond for his second punt of the game. Ogletree deep for West Mifflin. So you don't want to give any life here late to West Mifflin in the first half. Not at all. 2.26 to go. And I'm not so sure I'd kick this ball to Ogletree either. I wouldn't give him a whole lot of space. Slow He's snap. Talented. Radcliffe gets it away. Ogletree now has to die for it. The Fumble. Mustangs. Fumble. Who came up with it? Doesn't look like the Mustangs are celebrating. So no. Ogletree got back on it, I think. It might have been Peyton Uhas with the recovery. But either way, West Mifflin fortunate wow. not to for fumble sure. that ball away. And I can understand what Ogletree was trying to do. He saw that ball end over end, trying to save some yardage so the ball didn't bounce away. But he was just fortunate that that ball came back. Yeah, diving forward to make a catch is very difficult on those tail-dragging punts. I'm trying to figure out what the Mustangs are doing here. It looks like they're confusion on defense. They sure are, but they need to get out there and get ready. The play clock is about to start, I think. Looks like they called another penalty. Wow. Or no, they're just marking it incorrectly, I was going to say. I'm still not sure what happened here. I don't either. They're going to make them punt it again. Maybe it was an off a uh, legal procedure against the Mustangs. I didn't see a call. I did not either. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going on. It looks like, wait a minute. They're going to make them punt it again. So it's got to be, what, five, well, you, they haven't marked off the five yards yet. Oh, they're going to, oh, that's a first down for the Mustangs, if that's the case. What's the call here? Wow. We did not see a signal. We're still looking for a signal. That's got to be a first down for the Mustangs, a 15-yard penalty. Wow. Did not see a signal. It had to be some kind of an unsportsmanlike conduct call. Yeah, either that or a roughing the kicker. I didn't see it on the other end. But now the Mustangs getting the ball back at the 45, now with 2.17 to go. Gallagher looking deep, has his man out there to Shields, and could it be an inter interference call? No. Ogletree with a nice play. He might have wow. got away with one there. Yeah, a little bit of face guarding. He didn't turn <laughs> around to find the ball. Not at all. But there was not enough contact for the interference call. So another attempt deep there to the Shields comes up empty. But nice thought by the Mustang <laughs> offense to try to strike quickly. Yeah, so now all of a sudden. Mustangs trying to make something happen here. 2-11 to go. A lot of time for the Mustang offense. They can get something going here. Carney. Carney has room. There he goes right up the middle. Can he make another man miss? Caught by the safety by the ankles there. I think that was number Ogletree, Tyrese Ogletree. Saves the touchdown, but a huge run there by Carney. Yeah, just a, showed some elusiveness. Yes, he did. A nice inside handoff there, and he was able to just spring through that hole. And it oh. looked like the with the wide receivers being split out, it looked like West Mifflin was anticipating pass again. 
Carney able to pick up a quick 15. Showing blitz now, and this is Pratt. Can he get around the end? He would have room if he can, but he's not going to be able to get much. Maybe a half a yard. I yeah, think they'll give him much. one. And they're going to keep the clock running, too. Wow. I mean, he's out of bounds. I'm not I, sure why. Yeah. That's a little bit interesting. And Pratt's limping off. Looks like he might have tweaked that right ankle a little bit. He's had some problems with that early in the season. Yeah. Coach Hogger doesn't want to see that either. No. So now the clock still Down to running. 106. You would think the Mustangs would speed things up here, maybe get into Radcliffe range. Yeah. So. In under a minute. And the Mustangs in no hurry. They do have two timeouts. This is Carney again spinning his way inside the 25. And that's going to be down to about the, let's see, 24-yard line. And Coach Colasar calls timeout with 43 seconds to go. Mustangs trying to put some points on the board here late, leading 14 to nothing. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. Sam Davis was a gift from heaven. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-2799. Welcome back. 43 seconds to go with Mustangs with a third and five at the 25-yard line. Gallagher in the shotgun with Carney to his left. Sends Hooper into motion. Now under extreme duress. <laughs> Can he get away with it? No. Out of bounds. Well, and again, another smart play. Don't take the loss. He had three Titans chasing him down. They were able to bust through that offensive line of the Mustangs rather easily. So Gallagher pretty much running for his life and able to dump that ball out of bounds and actually save some time as well for the Mustangs. Clock stops at 38.8. So fourth down. Still a little bit out of Radcliffe's range. That would be about a 42-yarder. Yeah, and I would be interesting to see what they do here. Maybe a quarterback draw. They're trying to draw him offside, which we've seen a number of times already. Yep. And Looks now like we a have, false start. It is. False start on the Mustangs. It's going to be fourth and nine now. So now five penalties for 35 yards for the Mustangs. Opportunity here late. Could be going by the wayside, but. Still an opportunity here on fourth down, fourth and ten. Might have to You're go to no his man's man. land. Yeah. Kiss. They got twin receivers to the right, trip receivers to the near side. Gallagher back there by himself. No protector. Titan showing blitz, and here they come, right up the middle. Gallagher buys time. Now throws it into the end zone. It's going to be picked off. No, going to be no, dropped. dropped. Yep. So almost intercepted, but the Mustangs turn it over on downs. Really no chance there for Kiss as he was down there around the five-yard line, but the Mustangs will turn it over with 28 seconds to go here in the first half. And West Mifflin, you, do you try to make a quick strike or do you do you just run out the clock? Well, you got to be careful here if you're the Mustangs. Yeah. Don't want to give them any momentum going into halftime. Yeah, play. Don't let anybody behind you. And looks like West Mifflin called a timeout. They have. And we'll keep it right here with 28 seconds to go as the Mustangs will come over and talk to the defensive coordinator for the Mustangs to try to make sure they understand 
that with 28 seconds to go and only one timeout for West Mifflin, a long field of 71 yards to go. But we've seen it happen. Don't let them get behind you. We saw it on Sunday. <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a little different story there, although that was just plain flat-out speed that day. Yeah. Although, trust me, you know that West Mifflin has some speed burners on this team as well. They do, but the Mustangs will put two men deep. Yeah, play a little prevent here. We got the shields back there. And Lucas. Lucas. They're a good 20 yards off the ball. Rod's going to play up. He's going to have Spencer on the outside here. And they're going to run the ball up the middle. Not so get very much. That pretty much is going to end the first half, I would think. If you're going to do that, why did you even call timeout? I would agree. <laughs> and now they're going to call timeout again. Wow. I don't get I that. I don't understand that. No. So what are they going to give him, about a yard? That's so all that, he got. That was Del Rico White for a yard. So now this should be the last play. They have no more timeouts unless it's an incomplete pass. We're out of bounds. Yeah. Well. Once again, you cannot let anybody deep. Now they're McMillan so far. Two for two, but only four yards passing. <laughs> so let's see. The Mustangs, as you said, playing prevent. Just trying to run this clock out and go in at halftime with a 14-0 lead. This last 50 seconds has taken about a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a quicker second half in Brownsville with the running clock and six-minute quarters. It was. Quarters. So second and ten. Like we gave him one, so it's actually second and nine. Not that that matters. No. That, well, unless you're keeping stats for somebody else. Here he goes, looking, looking, and he's going to have some room. And he's down the sideline. He's out of bounds. It's going to stop the clock with ten seconds to go. So yeah. nice play. So I think they're going to mark it at the 50. Yeah. So, so he, nice play by McMillan, 19-yard gain. Adds to his stats anyway. Yes, it does. Picks up the three first downs. So 10 seconds ago, that, that play took nine seconds. <laughs> we can hear West Mifflin coaches complaining about clock management over there. Wow. 10.8 to go. Play clock down to 10 now. Now let's see what they do here. Put the ball in the air with 10 seconds. Might as well if you're West Mifflin. Yep. Shoot. Yep. He's looking he's around. Nobody. It. Yeah, he's got to run it. He's got nobody open. Keep Hooper with a bubble. Pick it up and run with it. Carney, wow. Should have been a scoop. Scooping a score. <laughs> so Bumble McMillan. by McMillan, and Mustangs will take over with just two seconds to go. So got to believe they're going to take a knee here, but. With Rodney Gallagher on your side, you might you might see something crazy. Yeah, well, we've seen it before. We sure have. Giving Rod 2.8 seconds to go. But One thing I noticed too, Gary, it doesn't look like they were working on Ben Wilson earlier. Wilson was in, started in place of the injured Eric Allen and really haven't seen much of him here. And after that first couple series of downs, they were working on his leg earlier. And Carney's done a nice job. Yes, he has. But the Mustangs getting a little thin at running back. So now they got the Hail Mary found formation on the right side. And here's Gallagher. Don't give him any room. And he's going to pad his stats too. Stays on his feet and out of bounds at the 45. So a 12-yard gain. 12-yard gain. And <laughs> that ends the first half. So with our score, Laurel Highlands 14, West Mifflin nothing. It's halftime here at Mustang Field. Gary Frankhauser along with Tony Anula, Jerry Dupay on the camera. We'll be back with halftime activities. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network.
Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs in Uniontown, would like to wish the Law Islands boys football team and their coaches on having a successful football season this year. service get taken out of service industries. It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Fatty liver affects 30% of Americans and is a leading cause of cirrhosis and liver cancer. Risk factors for fatty liver include alcohol abuse, obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Dr. Ruth Hart, Calabrese, Hoppy, and I specialize in the care of fatty liver. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalib and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalib and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Some things just go together, like bread and butter, blue jeans and Saturdays, best friends and phone calls. And a great match? You and discounts from Erie Insurance. It's like this. Safety features in your car will have you paying less for your auto insurance. And pay off your Erie Auto policy all at once, and you'll save up to 7% more. On your homeowner's policy, you earn discounts that start at age 46 and go up each time you celebrate a birthday. There are more discounts, too, for things like home safety features and even teenage drivers. And the savings keep adding up. When you have your auto and home covered with Erie, you get a discount. Buy a life policy with us, and the savings can get even better. At Erie Insurance, above all in service means making life a little easier on you and on your wallet. Your Erie agent is waiting for you. Your local Erie agent is Sprowls Insurance Group, 724-437-9812, or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Discount terms and amounts may vary by state. See your local Erie agent for details. Welcome back to Mustang Field. It's halftime, and we're being entertained by the West Mifflin Titan Marching Band to be followed by the Laurel Highlands Marching Band. Here's your halftime statistics with Tony Anula. All right, for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, passing-wise in that first half, Rodney Gallagher was 6 for 14 for 59 yards and one touchdown, and that ended up going to DeMonte Kiss on a little four-yarder in that first half. Receiving-wise, Tajay Hooper, had one catch for minus eight. Joe Chambers, one catch for 27 yards. Jaden Pratt, two catches for 18 yards. And DeMonte Kiss, as we mentioned, two catches for 22 yards in that four-yard touchdown in the first half. Rushing-wise, the Mustangs, Rodney Gallagher, nine carries for 43 yards and a one-yard touchdown run. Ben Wilson, three carries for five yards. Jaden Pratt, two carries for two yards. And Dan Carney coming in for the injured Ben Wilson with four carries for 28 yards in that first half for the Mustangs. The Mustangs ran 32 offensive plays. They had 78 yards rushing, 59 yards passing for a total of 137 yards. They had five penalties for 35 yards, and they did not commit a turnover in that first half. 
for West Mifflin. Offensively, Tayshawn McMillan had two completions for four yards. One of them was to Carlos Scott for no gain, and Andre Spencer had the other catch for the four-yard gain. Rushing-wise, McMillan, five carries for 35 yards. Tyrell Ogletree, five carries for 19 yards. Delron White, one carry for no yards. And Del Rico White, three carries for 10 yards. West Mifflin only ran 16 plays in that first half, so the Mustangs able to double them up offensively. 64 yards rushing, four yards passing for only 68 total yards in that first half. They had two turnovers, both on fumbles, and they had six penalties for 48 yards, Gary, and none bigger than that unsportsmanlike conduct that let the Mustangs continue that drive in the early first quarter. You're right about that, Tony. And all in all, good defensive effort by the Mustangs uh, in this first half, and they're going to have to carry that over in the second half. Just a 14-point lead, recapping those two scores. The first quarter score at 544 after the block punt and the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. The Mustangs were able to push it in on the Gallagher to kiss. Five-yard pass, the Radcliffe kick was good, making it 7 to nothing. And in the second at 7 3 Gallagher, the one-yard run after the 17-yard pass by Gallagher to Kiss. Kick again by Radcliffe was good, and it's 14-0 here at halftime. We'll be back with continuing halftime activities here on the South Union Township Sports Network. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. showed him so much respect. Watching Sam work the courtroom was like watching Michael Jordan with the game tied and eight seconds left. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. 
If you've been injured in an auto accident, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We've been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-2799. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs in Uniontown, would like to wish the Law Islands boys football team and their coaches on having a successful football season this year. Sam Davis and Pius Craft was amazing. Everyone showed him so much respect. Watching Sam work the courtroom was like watching Michael Jordan with the game tied and eight seconds left. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured in an auto accident, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724 437 2799. Good luck to the Law Hines Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott.
Dr. Fraser Stokes, did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not... The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Royal Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Royal Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott.
We're back at Mustang Field, just about ready for second half action. West Mifflin will have the first opportunity on offense to receive the second half kick, and the Mustang defense is going to have to try to maintain their intensity here in the second half, Tony. Well, a little bit different story than what we thought it was going to be, Gary, because we thought that the offensive line for West Mifflin was just going to push the Mustangs' defensive line all around, but that hasn't happened. They've played extremely well, kind of loaded up the box a little bit, and have been able to stop holding West Mifflin to 64 yards of rushing in that first half. So nice, done nice, a nice coaching job. adjustment by the Mustangs exactly. to uh, seal those creases and uh, really limit the West Mifflin running attack. And they might see the uh, West Mifflin offense try to open it up a little bit. We saw that a little bit late with McMillan scampering on a couple long runs, and you might see that um, attempt again, and Ogletree maybe getting him, out, getting him out in the flat, get some open field running. Well, yeah, he had a couple opportunities there towards the end of that first half where there was nobody in front of him for probably about 15 yards, so he was able to make a couple nice gains there for West Mifflin, but really didn't matter at that time. They had a long, long situations to get a first down, but we'll see what happens in the second half. They only threw the ball twice in that first half, but I'm sure they're going to try to make some adjustments here to get back in this game, only down 14 to nothing. And the Mustangs in uh, prevent defense there to end the first half kind of allowed those big gains by McMillan on the uh, quarterback keepers. So here we go. Mustangs with a 14-point lead. All important game here for the uh, 4A section Big 8 conference action with uh, Thomas Jefferson and TJ battling it out down at Bell Vernon. The two big boys in the conference. We'll see who comes out on top there. We had a late score of 14 to 13 with Bell Vernon on top in the first half. And I think they said that there were 51 seconds to go in that first half. So this might be the year for Bell Vernon, Gare. Tell you what, they're loaded up with Whitlock and Martin. And we'll see them next week. They are dynamic, no doubt about it. We'll be down on the bright gold field of Bell Vernon next Friday night. Teeing it up is Radcliffe. Back deep, Ogletree. I think so. And, and this Delron is going to White. be White at the 10. Bringing it out to the 15 to 20. Now trying to get outside, nice but tackle. a nice open field tackle there, and that's Kiss. Kiss, We've beautiful called his tackle. name a lot, both on offense and defense. Special teams now for DeMonte Kiss. A nice tackle, 21-yard line, a little shoestring action. Best coverage by the Mustang kickoff team so far here this evening. Sets West Mifflin up, first and 10 at the 21-yard, make it the 22-yard line. Okay, we'll say the 22. So now West Mifflin trying to get something going offensively, as we said. Only 68 yards of total offense in that first half. McMillian in the shotgun. Sends a wide receiver way out here to the left side, one-on-one -on -one with Gallagher. They're going to give it to Ogletree on the right side, and he has some room this time. So nice run on first down, pickup of 11. So... The student body right seemed to work that time for West Mifflin. They're going to give him 10 yards right at that 33, 32, I'm sorry, so now you for get, the first down. Yeah, they went on the right side with Trunzo and DeMary over there. They did a nice job stopping that Mustang line from getting any type of penetration. Lucas Farron sprinting in there for the Mustangs at left end. We see him coming in very frequently. 43 defense now for the Mustangs. Quick slant, and the ball dropped. That was right in his hands, in too. In and out of the hands of number 11. Pick up that. That's Carlos Scott. Scott yes. with one catch already, but for no yards. And that's a first incomplete pass for West Mifflin. That one, that's one that should have been caught. Would have been a nice six-yard gain on first down. Now second and 10. Twin receivers to both sides. Here's Ogletree now being held there was Rodney Gallagher, and there's the flag. That's coming back. Yeah. 
I was going to say that was pretty <laughs> obvious. <laughs> fumble down here at about the 42-yard line, but Gallagher got tackled at the 30-yard line. And that's going to be pushed back 10 yards at that point. <laughs> he's, looking, he's looking around. <laughs> so I don't looking, have the ball. Why are you tackling me? <laughs> looking for that laundry. And it's hard it. to see because it's right on the three on the 30-yard line there. And that's going to be a spot foul too. Yeah, that's going to push him back 10, so it's going to bring up second down and 20. And again, penalties hurting this West Mifflin team. That's a seventh penalty now. And they're going to knock him back 10. That's yeah, and actually and that a little was bit two more yards than that. deep. So that yeah. was a, be a so 12 yard second penalty. and 22. Yeah. So now seven penalties for 60 yards for West Mifflin. So Coach Steele cannot be happy about that. Start the clock. Start the play clock. And here we go. First possession of the second half for West Mifflin. Trailing 14 to nothing to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs here on the Mustangs' actual home opener. Yes, home opener, homecoming, There's, new turf. That had to be motion, and again, penalty against West Mifflin. Yeah, it looked like the right side of the line the moved. The whole side, the whole, all yeah. of them. <laughs> it was on two, not one. <laughs> So now eight penalties, 65 yards, and they're really digging themselves a hole. Going to be second and 26. Wow. Well, the Mustangs need to take advantage of this, maintain some field position. Yeah. I mean, if they can get a big stop here, they're probably going to get the ball in decent field position, maybe even block another punt. Slot receiver has some room, and it, it, they're looking for that short pass and give him some running space, but that's going to be a short gain of about five. Complete to Carlos Scott again. Or yeah. no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Scott. Number 11, yes. Yep. So that's going to bring up third down and about 22. So we'll give him four yards. So Scott now with two catches for four yards. Another opportunity here for the Mustangs to keep everything in front of themselves. If you're West Mifflin, you might think about a quick kick. Yeah, well, they're in deep territory. Let's see no, what they can gonna do. Be, they're they're going to run it. And that's not going to be any room out here. And that's going to be a loss on the play of about one yard line. Out here is Carney, Gallagher to keep him to no gain, and that's going to bring up fourth down and 22. And it barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So now the Mustangs, I think, should take the opportunity to at least rush this punter with the snaps being less than ideal. Release the Hounds. Absolutely. Send all 10. You got Gallagher back. See I Pratt's back out there. That's a good sign. Must have got him. Oh, pretty good snap this time. Oh, they got oh. it away. Almost got it, though. Gallagher's going to let it bounce, and that's going to be a great punt now. Yes, it is. All the way down to the 31-yard line. So that's a see, 20, 30, almost a 40-yard punt. Yeah. See. 8.35 to go here in the third. Mustangs on top, 14 to nothing in their first opportunity on offense here in the second half. And they're still searching for a 50-50 winner. I know it's not us. I didn't buy one. No, we didn't get a chance. No, we, we got shut would've. out. Would have been a big one, too. Would have been a big one. Uh-oh. We have a winner. Hold your cards. Gallagher now in the shotgun. To his right is Carney. They're going to hand it to Carney on the left side. And a nice quick tackle there coming up to make the tackle. We've called his name a lot. Number seven, Jameer Hill. So short gain of one by Carney that time. Well, at this point in time, Gary, if you can just keep doing this, eat up some clock. 
keep the ball away from West Mifflin, maybe get a couple first downs, you're going to be in pretty good shape here. Yes, that's, that's true. <coughs> Heck, West Mifflin themselves almost used four minutes and didn't get anything out of it. Exactly. Gallagher now hits his man. Hooper. And that's Hooper, and he's going to get a nice first down out to the 44-yard line. So nice pitch and catch that time. Hooper just goes down 12 and hooks up right in the, between the hash marks. Yep. And Gallagher hit him perfectly. So first down Mustangs at the 44-yard line. And Hooper coming off limping a little bit as well. Looks like he might have tweaked his right ankle. And the Mustangs, a few injuries here tonight. But can't even rub any dirt on it. <laughs> New dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rubber is right. There's, this is Carney, and he's going to get hit for no gain. Maybe break, works his way for a yard. i tell you what, he's done a nice job. Yeah. He's done a nice job coming Sh in. Shields on the tackle there for West Mifflin. As we Give said, one. Allen out. And now with Wilson being injured, not coming back after that injury in that first half. So Carney's stepping up. He's got six carries for 29 yards in this game. Nice average. Yes. Back goes Gallagher looking. Now he's got to sprint out to the right. Has his man open. That's Pratt. There's a flag. Did he catch it? He did. He did. Now did There's they call a flag a hold? back here at the 42. I think it's going to be hold. I think they're going to bring it back is right. Gallagher trying to buy some time. And there's a hold. Yep. Nice catch by Pratt to no avail. So the and Mustang's going to get hit with about a 12-yard penalty there. And pushing it back will be the holding penalty. So now the <laughs> Titans the beneficiary of a Mustang penalty. You got a few Mustangs pleading their case, saying that they didn't think it was a hold, but not so sure about that. There's no uh, mediation or arbitration. No, <laughs> they, don't, they don't need your expertise, put right. it that way. Just one of those things. Yep. So the Mustangs now going to be set up with a second and 20. 20. Both teams now playing behind the sticks. And again. There's the pump. He's got a He's man. If he gets again, it long this enough. The Shields, and he can't make it a play. Nice man-to-man -man coverage, stride for stride down the right side, and that was McMillan yeah, with Mc the Shields. McMillan, nice job. He's done a couple nice jobs on a couple pass plays for the Titans. You like to take a shot down the field a couple times, but the only problem with that is it stops the clock. Exactly right. And that's the last thing you want to do right now. Run some clock, get it going, get everybody out of the way. So third and 20, they just need to gain some yardage here to flip the field. Not really looking for a first down here. No, I think it's more just kind of eating up some time. There's a screen, screen, inside screen to Chambers. He has some moves, nice. unable to get out of that grasp of the shoestring tackle that time again by Uhas. Peyton Uha. So the Mustangs get about eight on that. And that's going to bring on the punter, Diamond, as the Mustangs dejectedly come off the field offensively. <laughs> well, as we said, the nice part is he stayed in bounds, keeps the clock running. We're under six minutes to go here in this third quarter. So if the defense can keep doing the same job that they've done so far, the Mustangs may actually start 5-0 and for the first time ever. And Diamond, oh, man, how did he even try to get that off? Low snap, and that's going to be picked up by the Titans, and they're going to have great field position regardless of what happens over there. And the Mustangs now with the bad snap roll it back to Diamond, and he's unable to scoop it up. So West Mifflin's going to take over deep in Mustang territory at about the 33-yard line. So turn about fair play now. Exactly. Get a little block and punt on a be bad an, snap. An, a, a momentum shifter. That's all the way down to the 36. Now this is going to test the Mustangs' defense here for sure. So the 36-yard line, and the Titans take over with 5.37 to go. Chance to play the field position game just backfired that time yes, on the Mustangs. Yes, it did. Well, Diamond came in averaging 
35 yards a punt. He does a nice job. But yeah, he does. Yeah, could have swung the field definitely for the Mustangs. That but wasn't now. his problem that time. The snap just came back rolling to him. Exactly. Not much you can do. And it's going to be Ogletree now with room around the left side, and he's going to be tripped up by Gallagher at about the 31. But he That was another penalty? Now what do we have? Not exactly sure, but it looks like it might be. Against the Mustangs, I, I think. was going to say, yeah. Tripping, maybe. Dead ball, personal foul on the Mustang. Uh, That's a huge penalty. So after Coach a... Coach Colasar might be good to call a timeout here and get his guys straightened out because that is huge. That is no huge. need for that. No, it's going to Dead move ball in. foul adds 15 to a five-yard gain. Yep. So now West Mifflin with the ball and really just trying to get back into this game. And, and that, it, that punt, that bad snap could turn this game around. 14 points by no means is a safe lead for no. the Mustangs. Not especially with this talent that West Mifflin has. They've got a lot of athletes on this team. Ball sitting at the 15 now, and it's going to be Ogletree being chased to the right side. They're going to string him out, and Pratt able to make the tackle, but pushes him out of bounds. But that's going to be a nice four-yard gain. It is. On it first down, so stops the clock, too, out of bounds. And Pratt, again, making a nice tackle. He's done a good job defensively so far here for the Mustangs. Second down and six at the 11. Might see the uh, same play coming back the other way here. And they, they like to run to that right side towards Full Tronzo and Demary. Power running now. And That's he's going to get it down inside the five to about the three-yard line. That's going to set up a first and goal. First time we saw that formation by Wes Mifflin, and it worked as they pushed the Mustang defenders Back, and that was a flag. What do we got? What did they call? I didn't see the – they gave a signal, but I didn't see what they called. It might have been an Ill, Ill, illegal formation, maybe. Wow. So that wipes out a nice eight-yard gain and a first down. It does. That's going to make it second and ten. Well, second and 14 now. Wow. I'm not penalties. Sure. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see if they give us a signal again. The coaches are going crazy. On the West Mifflin side. Yeah, which I don't blame them. Flag was thrown well before the advance of the ball, so referee surely saw what he saw. So nine penalties now on West Mifflin. Second and 16. Yeah, and you had a first and goal on the three. Now you're going to move back to the 21-yard line. And White's going to get another shot. And he makes a nice run of about seven yards. Now we got a flag again. Wow, what do we got? That might that be a late hit there. If that's the case, that would be an automatic first down, half the distance to the goal. And the Mustangs are going backwards, so it looks like that's the case. Yeah, let's see what we have. So they stopped him at the 12, so you're right, another nine-yard gain for White. Dead ball, personal foul. Oh, whoa! Juan West Mifflin, huge. Wow. Wow. Maybe they called offsetting, though. I think they did. No, they no, did They're going to mark it, no. Wow. So now. Coaching staff for West Mifflin has to be losing their they're, minds. They're going crazy right now. That's 10 penalties for 85 yards. Wow. The only thing good about this for West Mifflin is keep stopping the clock. Yeah. There he is. He's just giving the referee an earful over there. Split backs. Fakes it. Now rolls left. Has some room. Need to come up and make a tackle if you're the Mustangs, and they do, and that's Gallagher. Gallagher with a nice tackle there. And that at about the 16-yard line, yeah. so a nice run there of about I'm gonna give him 15 yeah, 11. yards. Yeah, going to give him 11. 11. It was on the uh, – Yeah, they were yeah. on 27, yeah. Yeah. So we'll give him, give him 11. So now it's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth and 11. Ball at the 16-yard line. 
Another huge play defensively for the Mustangs. Yeah, this is a big stop if the Mustangs can do it here. After the setup on the botched punt. On the bad snap. And got some people working on the sidelines. Long snapping right now for the Mustangs. There he goes, McMillan. Gets it to him down the right side. Can they keep him from the first nice down? They tackle. do. Open field tackle there to Monte Kiss. Kiss. Again. Beautiful tackle right there. And, and slow Midland to get up. Runner is slow Midland. to get up. Yeah, and that's white. Our lines will take over on downs at the 10-yard line, I believe. It is. Yep. Nice design play. Had him out in the open field. Just one man to beat to get the first down. And DeMonte Kiss said no. Beautiful tackle. Beautiful open field. And really, that was he was the last man to beat. So the Mustangs now with 3.39 to go here in the third. Take over at their own 10-yard line. And for something that looked like it was going to materialize there for West Mifflin, Penalties, they just shot themselves in the foot on that drive, Gare. Here comes and Gallagher. Middle, that's Gallagher just trying to get some positive yardage on first down. Gets three, I believe. Yep. So the clock running. Give him four. Yeah, a generous four. Get that, keep that clock running. Down to 3.12 to go here in the third. What started out to be a quick running clock here in the third. It's kind of slowed down. Now the Mustangs use all the play clock. It's under 10. Here's Gallagher again. Nowhere to go this time, but he breaks it loose somehow. Just hold the ball. Yeah, he does hold the ball. No, he, no, did, he did not. He not. fumbled. Let's see what the call, call is. They're going to call him down. They're pointing towards the Mustang field, and it is fumble. Fumble on the play gets. So Gallagher after gaining wow. about five yards there. And he's just saying he doesn't understand. He thought he was down. But that's going to give West Mifflin the ball again. Now deeper in Mustang territory at the 19. And they're making his defense work. Wow. There's no doubt about that. Not what the Mustangs needed there. An yeah. opportunity for a third and short turns into a turnover for West Mifflin. And let's see if they can stiffen up again. Gallagher with his second fumble loss of the year. Second in the last two weeks. Hands off to the right side, and this defense is just kind of Wearing down, and White goes down the right side, inside the five to the three-yard line. Huge pickup from the 19 to the three. That's going to be a 16-yard pickup. Nice run there by White. You can see he's come out in this second half and putting a charge on. And that off tackle, the bugaboo for the Mustangs last week, works again here by West Mifflin. Down the drive. Going to put them right back in his ball game. It so, sure is. So Delron White with a 16-yard gain makes it first and goal from the three. McMillan now gives it to White, and he's going to slice his way in. Is he in? No. No signal. They're going to the mark him line. at the two or half-yard line, half I should say. Wow, looked like he was going to be caught in the backfield on the sprinting in linebacker. I believe that was Carney, but – Second and a half a yard. Wow. Just step under up under center and run the quarterback sneak here. Oh yeah. Did you give it let McMillan just pound it in? There you see the although I don't know. I'd if camera I'm coaching, work by Jerry. See I'm, that? Yeah, if I'm coaching, I'm gonna let White do it because he just busted out eighteen quick yards for you. So I'd I'd give him the laurels to let it take it in. I don't like this shotgun at, at the half yard line. No. There they are going to give There's it to White, White and, and he's, he's going to walk in. No, Ooh. fumble, fumble. No, 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 it's, he's in. He's in first. Yep, they gave they the called touchdown, the touchdown So yep. he crossed the goal line before the ball came loose. So White on the carry for one yard after the Mustang turnover. Now 127 to go here in the third. We got a new ball game, 14 to 6. So touch, 
Controversy got here little, in the press box. Got a little action going on here. Snap it down, but it was a whistle before the kick. Kobe calling security. Wow. <laughs> Good thing we're nice. The Mustangs now we're offside, offside so now do you go for two instead? I would. I would too. Cut it to Get a six-point yeah. league game, but I look looks like they're going to line up for the kick again. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I would have gone again. Fake it. Yeah. And there you and go. And the kick is up, and it is good. Yeah, just the replay. Another flag. Let's see what this one is. They might have called it up here. Oh, legal procedure. On, oh, they're going to have to kick it again. <laughs> so it's still 14 to 6. Clock is stopped. Oh, my. 11 penalties for 90 yards. <laughs> Man. Yeah, this is an well, interesting second half. Well, the Mustangs are half. making this interesting, though, by their own volition here in the second half. Yeah, we're going to see. Time of possession has to be about 90% <laughs> West Mifflin in this third quarter. Kick is again. well through again. So after all that, it's still 14-7. <laughs> With a minute 27 it's, to go. It's good it's called back. It's good it's called back. It's good it's called back. Well, here yep. we go. So with a minute 27 to go here in the third, it's 14-7. Laurel Highland still on top. We'll be right back here on the South Union Township Sports Network. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days. At life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service. Real service. From a person you know, and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank. At your service. Here we go, West Mifflin back in the ball game, 14 to seven via the Mustang turnover. And they will tee it up to kick it deep. Rodney Gallagher is deep. No, they uh, switch the things up here. Now Rodney Gallagher's deep. Looks like Lucas to the near side at the 20 and probably Pyro on the left side. Trying to look and see who that is over there. Here's a run up and the kick. And that's going to be Pyro at the 15. Straight up the field and West Mifflin now Trying playing some, in, some inspired football as their coverage team holds the Mustangs inside the 25 yard line. So let's see if the Mustangs can regain their composure here. Put some plays together. And what we thought might be a cakewalk for him now all of a sudden has turned into a close game. They're going to have to hold on. Absolutely. Have a little possession here going on. Minute 18 to go in this third quarter. West Mifflin showing the ability to move the ball when they don't kill themselves with penalties. Well, now we're just kind of waiting because, you know, this is normally – Rodney Gallagher time when something needs to happen. He's normally the guy that does it. Gets it out here to the Shields. That's no, Lucas. That's Lucas, yeah. I'm sorry. And he's going to get it ahead for a relatively short gain. The pass was thrown all the way over here to the sideline, but just a two-yard gain. Yeah, not very much. And he got out of bounds. Stop the clock. Which is not good for the Mustangs right now. So second down and nine, make it eight. Three, 
wide receivers out to the right. Now Carney, and he's nowhere to go. Does fall forward for a couple. Out to the 27 yard line, make it the 28. And that's gonna be another third and long for the Mustangs. Yeah, not, not very good right now. They need to get this offense clicking. And you don't wanna bring that punt team back out again with the <laughs> bad snaps that we've seen. Big play here as all the momentum has swung to West Mifflin's side of the ball. And Showing blitz, Gallagher looking, looking. Now he has some room. Nice move. He has the speed. He's nice down the right move. side. Maybe no one's going to catch him. Can he cut it back? Can he cut it? He does. One man to beat. Cuts it again, again. Down to the five, to the three. Rodney Gallagher. <laughs> All the way from the 28-yard line, <laughs> dashing, dancing, spinning, hurtling, making defenders <laughs> miss all the way to the three-yard line. A 69-yard run by Rodney Gallagher, and it was as pretty as it looked. And now he's down. Maybe a cramp. Yeah, it looks like a cramp. Ten seconds to go here in the third. Rodney's going to get some assistance as he is – Cramped up after the dynamic, how many yards, Tony? Count them up for 69. me. 69. 69 yards. 69 yard run. So now that's going to take Gallagher over 100 yards for the game. Now at 120. You so called it Gallagher time. Yes, it was. You know whenever you need something. But the Mustangs do not have it in the end zone just yet. Ten seconds to go here in the third. Mustangs will huddle up, and I think the Mustangs will had had to call a timeout. They did. So let's, oh, maybe not with the injury timeout. They're rubbing his left calf, so that's going to be the cramp that Rodney's going to have to deal with here. Uh, yeah, but he. That just takes some time <laughs> to work that out, and that just just doesn't go away. No, immediately. but. He's going to go over and get himself a little shot of Gatorade. And He's got to come out of the game for at least one play. And so I'm going to guess Soltis is probably going to go in to quarterback. But Soltis has seen nice, some action, he, yeah. He's done some nice things already here in the first part of the season. Yeah, he has. He's three for six on the year passing for 50 yards and a touchdown, and he's four carries for two yards rushing. So Strong he's Strong kid, yeah. He could just get under center here and – Push it ahead with a uh, – well, that, they start, started the clock, so that ended the third quarter at the three-yard line. So after three, Mustangs 14, West Mifflin 7. Mustangs threatening as we come back here on the South Union Township Sports Network. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Fatty liver affects 30% of Americans and is a leading cause of cirrhosis and liver cancer. Risk factors for fatty liver include alcohol abuse, obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Dr. Ruth Hart, Calabrese, Hoppy, and I specialize in the care of fatty liver. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Here we go. Fourth quarter action with the Mustangs at the three-yard line. First and goal. Coming in at quarterback for the Mustangs. C.J. Soltis. He's going to pass, and he's going to get it in the end zone for the Shields, and that's going to be out of his reach. He's trying to – looks like it might have been Pratt down there. Yeah, it was Pratt's Pratt. looking – he's looking for an offensive – I'm sorry, a defensive pass interference call, but not he's gonna not going to get, get that. And Gallagher will trot back in. Now second and goal from the three. I'm not sure I like that call. 
Well, I'm going to guess that they're thinking that he's going to come in and just hand it off because he's not warmed up or anything, but probably not a bad try. you got to figure. you get got Pratt over there. He's got some size advantage over that defensive back and just couldn't couldn't get the throw to go, and here Gallagher comes Rod. Up the middle. Does he get in? No, he's down to a, the half-yard line. Short of the goal line at the half-yard line. Let's see where he spots it. Yep. Just about one yard to go. Mustangs will line up quickly. Gallagher under center. Don't take it himself, I'm sure. Now what do we got? He got a false start. Look, oh. I think Carney might have started in the backfield. Shoot. Looked That's like not he good. Yeah, yeah, looks like he might have moved a little bit. So now third instead of a and third goal and with short those six. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, it looked like Carney just kind of stepped ahead before the snap. <coughs> and he got called for the penalty. Not what the Mustangs needed. First and goal at the three. Now third and goal at the six. Back goes Gallagher. And this time it's the Shields, and he catches it. Touchdown. Going up and catching that one is DeAndre DeShields. We've seen that several times for Keandre. Going high for the Mustang touchdown. Floating pass by Rodney Gallagher. Puts the Mustangs back ahead by 13 with the extra point to come. Yeah, and that's the thing. You got the Shields over there again with a lot of size. That's his 10th catch of the year. Now that's also his sixth touchdown, so he's got 10 catches. Six of those for touchdowns, so now a flag on the play. They're going to push him back. Wow. Too many flags. So is this? Oh, they're going to mark this off from the. Uh-oh. Is it against? No. No, they're... I don't know what they did there, to be honest with you. <laughs> but Radcliffe on for his extra point attempt. It might be a uh, unsportsmanlike that's going to be uh, yeah, taking was, on the kickoff. I was looking for the signal, but I did not see it. Radcliffe, good snap, good hold, and that one Missed is blocked. That one. Yeah. Well, that could be big. So could. the kick is no good. So that leaves the score. Laurel Highlands twenty, West Mifflin seven, with eleven nineteen to go here in the fourth. Gary Frank Kauser along with Tony Anula and Jerry DuPay will be back here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. Here we go. High drama here at Mustang Field. That drive was two minutes with seven plays, 76 yards, highlighted by the Gallagher 69-yard run down to the three-yard line. And when the Mustangs were pushed back to third and six, third and goal from the six, it was Gallagher to the Shields to finish the drive. But the kick blocked and a penalty on the play will push the Mustangs back to the 25 for the kick so this may result in some decent field position for West Mifflin now trailing by just 13. Yeah, and you're going to let him back in. Radcliffe with a nice boot all the way back to the 21 yard line. This is White. He hits his. Wow. Boy he runs man. hard. Now he's going to change fields and he is able to get it out to about the 40 yard line. DeMonte he ran about Kiss. 70 yards. <laughs> yeah. Well, DeMonte Kiss with another tackle there defensively. But that's going to give West Mifflin decent field position at their own 40-yard line, first and 10. Fatigue may play a big part in this fourth quarter, Tony. Both teams showing some uh, hands-on hips, hands-on knees. But <laughs> this defense for the Mustangs is going to have to 
be up to the task to keep the West Mifflin Titans out of the end zone. They're on good starting field position there on the 40-yard line. And once again, the Mustangs need to get this clock moving. McMillan in the shotgun. He goes straight back. They're going to try to go deep early. Has a man out there. And picked it, it off. Be picked off. No. Oh, no. Wow. Incomplete. Nice play there by Spencer that to break Ki that up. That was Kiss. Well, Kiss, but Kiss had the interception. Spencer's yeah. the one that ripped it out of his hands. You're right. Beautiful play there by Spencer to really save Mifflin. that possession. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Kiss came down with that ball. Just knocked it out. Put yeah. his hand in between the arms of Kiss and saved the interception. Every bit of. Kiss came into that game, this game with 16 tackles. And actually, if you remember, Gary, we saw him last year in West Mifflin. Picked off a pass and ran it back 49 yards for a touchdown for the Mustangs. And that would have been a big difference there if he'd have made that interception in this game. You're, you're, that's for sure. This is over. Nice Ooh, tackle. Nice tackle again. Guess who? Again, blocking the back. That's Kiss. Kiss. Kissed him right there, too. And that's a loss of six. And you, do you take the – it looks like a block in the back. And that's declined. No, I would definitely decline it. So Third and long. So now – Third and 14. Should be. No, fifth, 16. Yeah, so they're going to give him a six-yard loss. So now all of a sudden, West Mifflin again. Don't blame him for taking that shot down the field with McMillan. He actually a decent throw. Kiss with good coverage, but that play right there just got blown up. And Kiss, as of right now, he's our player of the game, I would say. I was say. just going to say that, yeah. Tony. Stole the words right out of your mouth, brother. We've been working together too long. That's huh? right. <laughs> Husband and wife team. That's right. He's looking deep now. McMillan, pull it down. Can he get the first? Doesn't look like it. Coming up again to make the tackle there is DeMonte Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> so now you did get a 10-yard gain out of that. Yeah, but it's fourth down and six. What do you do here if you're West Mifflin? Might as well yeah. go. you got to go at this point in time. Why is the clock stopped uh, now? Uh, that I don't know. Unless they said he stepped out of bounds. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he did step out. I didn't see the signal. But regardless, West Mifflin now with a big play here with 10-16 to go. Yeah, and he must have stepped out of bounds yeah. over there. Play clock down to six. Five, four, three, two, Offsides. One. The Mustangs oh, jump. Oh, my. On fourth and seven, now it's going to be fourth and one. Wow. That's a big ah, penalty right and there. Six to fourth and one, and the play clock was about to expire. Yeah, it's a big play right there. That is a life-sustaining mechanism <laughs> yes, for West it was. Mifflin. Yeah, they were, on, they were on life support, and then all of a sudden that offside. It's like they get jolted with the paddles. They're right back in it. Up the middle. No, he does not get the first down, and there's a flag. That's would, on West Mifflin. You would hope it's a motion penalty. Well, it's definitely on West Mifflin. And your That's check with declined. another big hit for nice the Mustangs. Nice play by your check. Can They're going to decline who, it. Yep. Who the penalty's on because <laughs> they throw the flag to the side of the field where the – where the penalty is. So right. So the Mustangs will take over in West Mifflin territory at the West Mifflin 49-yard line. Wow. So now's the time to run clock. Yes, definitely. 10-10 here to go. And I'll tell you what, another big defensive stop by the Mustangs. And that was impressive, actually, Gary. I'll tell you, they, uh, the bend but do not break your defense so far tonight. Yeah. And they've been on the field for a long time in this second they half. They sure have. We don't keep time of possession, but I can tell you that these gents are going to sleep good tonight. 
And that was a late arriver. That should be a penalty on West Mifflin, but no need for it as Carney will break one out for about 13 yards. Defender for West Mifflin ran onto the field. He was on the Laurel Highland side of the ball, but no need for that penalty. First down Mustangs down to the 36 yard line. And a nice play there by Carney. Carney with eight carries for 44 yards. Doing a fantastic job filling in for the injured Eric Allen and Ben Wilson. In Wilson injured earlier in that first quarter. There's Carney now just pushing ahead for a short gain. It might have been Rod there. Yeah, you're right. So, so Gallagher with a short one yard pickup. Well, they're going to say no gain but the clock continues to run. So Gallagher now 14 carries, 123 yards. And again, one touchdown on the one yard run, but nothing more impressive in that 69 yard run on that last possession though, Gare. Absolutely. Mustangs need to use the entire play clock. Our buddy Chuck Bondaranka said he looks like a video game player out there. Chris Berman would have a field day with that one. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Pass over the middle. Ah. Oh, wow. Whoa. Should have been intercepted. <laughs> Gallagher high on the pass, intended there for Chambers, I believe. Yeah. And that was just in and out of the hands of the defender. I think that was McMillan. It was McMillan. Mustangs extremely fortunate there. Yeah. The same way. I mean, at that play, I'm not so sure I'd be throwing the ball right now. No. Run some clock. If it gets the third down and you got to make a play, I mean, you got to figure you can take a whole minute off the clock no matter what. Yep. With a two score lead. Yep. Now, so third and nine. Need a first down here. Looks like Blitz. And it's going to be Gallagher, and he's nowhere to go. Nope. And that's going to be a no gain back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down. And. Mustangs need to punt here and pin them deep. Yeah. The clock's going to be down to 8.43 on a running clock. And Diamond will come on to the field for the Mustang punt team. I'll tell you what, right now you've got 25 seconds on the play clock. Let it go. Let it go. Walk around, one around, do whatever you want to do, but let it get down to about five at least. They They're going to snap it, it anyway, yeah. And almost blocked. That's going to be down at the 15-yard line. No, that was it. <laughs> wow. Think, I think Ringle might, or I'm sorry, West Mifflin could have touched it, but no. That was close. Down, down, down by Lucas, almost blocked. A high snap again. High snap at Peyton Uhas. What was he doing even getting around that ball? That well, could West have been Mifflin. huge. Oh, my, oh my God. gosh. So 8-11 now here. The Mustang defense back out on the field. And they're going to call, what are they going to do here? They're going to call a penalty? I'm not sure what it would I'm not sure what they're doing either. But the punt team is still out there, so it looks like it's against Laurel Highlands. Five-yard penalty. So they're going to make him punt again. We're not getting any signals from the white hat. No, I... He's over there explaining to <laughs> Coach Rod Steele what's going on. But at this point, we'd like to know, too. We need a good snap right yes, here. Yes, you do. They're going to bring everybody. Got to believe that. Yes, sir. Whoa. And he gets it away. This is a nice one. This is going to roll deep. Going to roll inside. Oh, now it rolls backwards. Ah. But it's still down at about the 13-yard line. So... Give Diamond credit for going up high for getting that snap. He was fortunate getting it again. away. Now you know what they're going to be working on here <laughs> this week. Yeah, you might want to <laughs> put Rodney back to snap it. <laughs> You're going to look. There's another, another flag. flag. What do we got now? Okay, let's the, uh, see what we got. These referees are going to have personal to foul against the Mustangs. Wow. So now they're going to tack on 15. 15 on top of that. Man. So now instead of starting at the 14-yard line. Colasar wants an explanation. He should get one, too. I'd like to see what happened there. 
man, that's going to be a turn a 30, 40-yard punt into a 10-yard punt. Yeah, and I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Actually, I thought they gave him a whole lot more yardage than they should have. They originally marked that ball at the, the 14. Yeah. So how's it getting out to the 34? But regardless, West Mifflin's going to start there. These uh, officials are going to have to take those flags to the dry cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially with the new turf. Probably got some green paint on it or something there. Jeez. Well, the Mustang defense again. Needs to stiffen. Back goes McMillan. He has his man and missed a tackle there. But Scott with a nice run. And that's going to be about an eight-yard pickup, close to nine. The clock runs. So Carlos Scott with his third catch for 13 yards. West Mifflin does have three timeouts, and they're going to hurry up, get to the line of scrimmage. Somebody's running off the field. Let's see if they they do get it, get him off the field. But the clock now runs. McMillan taking a lot of time. Yes, there's, there's another that's penalty. That's going to be on West Mifflin. That's a first down run by number 34. That's Ogletree, Ogletree. and he gets up limping too. But that's going to be another penalty. False start. Wow. 12 penalties for 95 yards against West Mifflin. We've seen a lot of laundry on both sides, Gary, because Laurel Highlands has a 12 penalties as well for 84 yards. Has not been a cleanly played ball game. No, it's been, hate to say it, but rather ugly. So now they're going to call it back, and it's going to be second and six. And the clock starts. The McMillan trying to line up the troops here. West Mifflin second and six. Looks like the wide receiver would line up offside, but this is going to be Ogletree, and he's got some room. But out there now to make the tackle. Let's see who that. That's the Shields out there. Yeah, nice tackle for a gain of about four. He, yeah, he didn't get the first down, so he's going to be about a yard short. Third and one, gain of five. Now we got time, time out. Are they going to call a first down? Wow. That's wow, amazing. that's a gift. You can't call a first down there. He did. Oh, my God. They're going to start the clock, though. That's terrible. Half yard short of the mark. Yeah. That's a gift. Pick him Same off. Same play. And they're just going to run that till the Mustangs stop it. So that's yeah. a short gain of about four yards. There's another flag they're going to throw in. <laughs> my, oh, my. And it looks like Scott's hurt. And it looks like the Mustangs are going to go backwards. Another 15-yard penalty. Yeah, Still don't have a signal. What is the call? They're going to send the trainers out to see Scott. He's looks like he's holding that left knee or maybe he's cramping. I don't know. Let's see what we can do here. We're trying to keep our eye on the white hat so he can tell us what the penalty is. But it looks like it's going to be against Laurel Islands and they're going to mark off another 15 yarder. Holy smoke. That's going to take it all the way down to the 38 yard line. Whew. First down for West Mifflin. 13 penalties, 99 yards. Still no signal as to what it was, but it's a big one. Yeah, and they're working on Carlos Scott. Looks like his left knee with the injury. With that injury, we'll take a quick timeout. Step aside here on the South Union Township Sports Network. 6-12 to go here in the fourth. Laurel Highlands on top, 20-7. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. 
Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, sprains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Oh, We're back, mark. and now they changed the penalty to be against West Mifflin. <laughs> Whoa. So the officiating okay. crew did a yo-yo. <laughs> Set up. A little change take of heart. Take it forward, take it back. Yeah, interesting. So, so now, now se second down and about 24. Wow. And we didn't see exactly what happened, but. We're not getting, no, we're not getting any signals either, no. which is really no. frustrating. So now 13 penalties, 110 yards against West Mifflin. That was a big one. Yeah, they've had a couple 15-yard varieties that now have cost them Now another flag from way back in the – that's a delay of game. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, wow. They're going to wave that off. No, it's – yeah, the referee's saying my, my fault, so they're going <laughs> to – well, I was going to say, luckily, I'm starting to run out of ink. Take the blame for that one. <laughs> Cut. Start that clock. We're under 540 to go here in the fourth. Mustangs up by 13. But they still need to maintain their concentration on defense. Back goes McMillan, flips it out to the left. This is Ogletree trying to get in the open, and he does. But that's going to be a gain. Out to about the 37, but he does get out of bounds to stop the clock. Gets out of bounds to stop the clock, and Dorchek that was actually. Pushed him out, but that stops the clock. But it's now going to be third down in about 16. Yeah, I would say 16. And your checks played a fantastic game as well defensively for the sure Mustangs. Has. We called his number a lot. Yep. We've had a couple guys really step up defensively for the Mustangs. As we said, kiss, your check. Yeah, We've also seen Pratt made a number of tackles, and Gallagher, Gallagher as well. Yeah. A, a few open field tackles. And the uh, up front guys have really been stern, too, to allow those linebackers to make the tackles. Yes, they have. There's With the pump. Pellin. They're trying to go deep, but he's not going to have any room to do that. Now dancing through. Does he get the first down? No. Wow, Ooh. nice hit there. And again, you know who it was. Demonte, Demonte Kiss. Kiss. No, I think that was your check. I don't know. That was a good lick there. Your check's getting a high five. <laughs> so now fourth down and about six. So we're going to give McMillan ten on the play. It's a nice run there by McMillan. It was an extremely nice run. He was nice trapped run. in the backfield, found his way out. And another big fourth down play coming up with 5-10 to go on a stop clock. We said the Mustangs' defense have been on the field a long time tonight. And it doesn't seem that way, especially because West Mifflin only ran 16 offensive plays in that first half. But second half, a different another story. Another penalty. penalty this play. one's on West Mifflin again. Ooh. Picked off. That's intercepted by Pratt. Pratt. So there was a penalty flag. Over here, looked like was on West Mifflin, but Pratt with the interception, they'll decline that penalty. Yes, sir. And Mustangs take over with five minutes to go in West Mifflin territory at the 46-yard line. Pratt just stepped right in the passing lane there. And with those good basketball hands, able to pick it off. Now McMillan under severe pressure, had yeah. to get rid of it on fourth down. And... Uh, so that set of downs took three minutes and two seconds off. And nothing to show for nothing it. Nothing to show for it is right. So now the Mustangs taking over with five minutes to go even on the 46-yard line of West Mifflin. Keep it on the ground. Keep it on the ground is right. Carney, Gallagher. Carney, Gallagher. Even a jet sweep. Use some time. Here's Just Carney. Hold he, it. Whoa, while well, he's hitting the backfield wow, quickly man. there. Nice play there by number 33. Israel Rose. Yeah. 
Rose came senior. He gets up limping a little bit. But that's a loss of one. Mustang offensive line's got to sustain their blocks in this situation to keep themselves in a positive mode. They'll just got to be able to run some time. and There's still 20 seconds on the play clock. Let it go down, Rodney. Yeah, let it go. Rod is right. Now he's smart enough. He knows what's going on. Pyro in motion. They're going to try an Notice inside. No, gonna Gallagher going to keep and it. And he's going to spin and lose more yards. Really did snap that way too early. There were still about 16 seconds left on the play clock. The only saving grace is he stayed in bounds, obviously, but yeah, still. West Mifflin's got to think about start using timeouts. So Gallagher going to miss. He's going to lose two yards on that play. Another third down, so Mustangs go backwards after the interception. Now third down and 14. Do you put it in the air? No. No, you don't. You're just going to run it, give it to Carney on the They're inside. They're going to blitz, you know that. And there's a man down the middle. Chambers ah. can't get it. But the pass was there if he could have connected, but that stops the clock with 3.28 to go. Free timeout for West Mifflin. Yes, I'm not and here comes the adventure <laughs> of the night on both sides, the punting squad. Yeah, we need to. Uh, Need to find some long snappers here. They're making this game. Chambers is in there doing it. Yeah, that's exactly who's in there, right? Number three. Yeah. That's, He's yep. a quarterback. There last he comes. Year. Yep. All you got to pass it between your legs. That's it. Just <laughs> throw it as hard as you can. What We're happened? Gonna. I think Chambers picked the ball up. Yeah, he did. I saw that too. So. So he's going to be a five-yard penalty for that. Yep. Maybe they're going to wave it off. Nope. Yeah, you can't wave it off. It's dead. That was a late call, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dead dead call there, so. Pick the ball up. Got to roll it on the ground. Nice snap. Yeah, there we go. Well, he took a little long time, but nice punt, too. The ball yeah. going to bounce back. And that's in. Going to roll dead at the 23-yard line, 22-yard 22 line. 22-yard line. Took about eight seconds off the clock. 3.16 to go here in the fourth. Mustangs on top, 20-7. to seven. Opportunity again for the West Mifflin Titans on offense, but they've been unable to sustain any kind of a long drive here yet this evening. Did take advantage of the one turnover by the Mustangs in the third quarter, and White with a... Long run down to the three-yard line, 16-yard run, taking it in himself from one yard out. Made it 14-7 to seven after the kick was good. But Rodney Gallagher comes back with a 69-yard run on third and nine for the Mustangs, putting it at the three-yard line. And the fade pattern in the corner to the Shields put the Mustangs back on top, 20-7. to seven. White in Unbalanced motion. to the right. Bootleg out here to the left, and nice run by McMillan, making Mustangs miss. Got another, another flag. flag. Wow. <laughs> Holding on the West Mifflin Titans. And they're throwing that flag. Okay, it's thrown at the 22, so it will be a 10-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. 14 penalties all the way back to the 12 yikes and that's going to start the clock too unless they would choose to call a timeout but let's see what he does and there you go give it the signal that should start the clock why didn't yep. it i don't hear their coach complaining now wow that's <laughs> that's definitely should start the clock yeah yeah they're getting a break be nice to get another turnover here for the Mustangs just to seal the deal. They're going to try to flood the zone, and there's down their middle again. And oh, there it is. Nice picked off. Oh, no, wow. He caught it. No, he didn't. It almost picked off. It was tipped. Kiss almost with his second intercept. Well, almost his second interception. Yeah, two almost. <laughs> and it's down to three minutes now. So McMillan 
trying to hit the streaking ogle tree coming out of the backfield. Good defense there by Kiss, not letting him get behind him, and good battle for the ball. Kiss and the Shields was in there too, so he did a nice job. And can't say enough about this Mustangs offense. I mean, West Mifflin came in only averaging 13 points a game. The Mustangs keeping them under that average and doing a nice job of it. McMillan gets it out here in the flat, but that's going to be a short gain. Two Mustangs there with the tackle. Gallagher and Carney team up on the tackle there to on number 19. That's Tyrese Ogletree. How many you got? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Ogletrees. So Ogletree with his first catch. Third and 16, I believe. Yeah, you are correct. McMillan looking, looking, has time. He has some room now. Oh, hit oh from nice. Behind. Your the check. Ball's loose. The ball stripped, and the Mustangs. Mustangs have it. And recovered there by number 56 for the Mustangs. Trev Thomas with the recovery, but was that your check that hit from behind? Yep, your check with the hit and the strip. And then Trevor Thomas with the recovery right along the boundary at the 17 yard line. So now the Mustangs set up deep in West Mifflin territory with 2.17 to go. And in the driver's it, seat. It, absolutely. West Mifflin with three timeouts. They can stop it three times, but the Mustangs have to keep it on the ground here. Oh, <laughs> if you put it up, uh, you got to question things right now. Tell you what, actually, at this point, you can take a knee. There's another oh, penalty wow. flag. That stops you know the what? Clock. I mean, take take a knee. Yeah, you could. I mean, seriously, let the or run the quarterback sneak, get yeah. up under center. Yeah, I mean, let the play clock go. You got forty seconds in between. Just let the play clock go. And make them use the timeout. Exactly. So we're going to have a false start on the Mustangs. I don't think I've ever seen this many penalties in a game. Let's see, 14 for the Mustangs, 14 for the West Mifflin Titans. <coughs> we, we did see a game one, maybe last last year one time we did a game. It was incredible. Now here comes Gallagher. He's going to try to dance his way around. He's going to use top clock, that's for sure. And he's going to lose three yards, but yep, it doesn't really matter. Eight seconds. And the clock's still running. you got to yep. wonder why West Midland's not calling timeout. Oh, yeah. They do now with 1.55 to go, but another 10 seconds ran off the clock. I don't think it's going to matter at this point, though, Gare. you got three timeouts left. You're down 13. Really haven't been able to do anything much on What's offense. That like? So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Mustangs still need to keep it on the ground here, though. Third down and about 13. Definitely 13. <laughs> got some uh, Verizon action yeah, we got, yeah. <laughs> behind us, that phone <laughs> ringing over there. Got a little jingle, jingle, jingle. So the Mustangs trying to go 4-0. and I'm sorry, 5-0. I have a note for the first time in ever Laurel Highlands history. And going to set up a huge game next week yeah, against sure the Bell Vernon Leopards. Our last information on that game had Bell Vernon on top, but that was at halftime. Yeah, we'll have, have to get the lowdown. We'll now we've got whistles. What's the call? Reset the play clock. Well, the thing of it is, they <laughs> Kidoke. And here it goes, Carney. And he's going to be hit at about the 23 and driven back. He's going to get down to about the 18, him. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think they're going to give him about three. But and then the West Mifflin calls their timeout. 141. It's fourth down. Do you kick a field goal here? 
No. I would not give that a try. Although I think Radcliffe has enough leg to do it. Yep. So with 1.41 to go, it's 20-7. to 7. Mustangs down at the 18-yard line. We'll step aside here quickly for a few messages from our sponsors here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Good luck to the Raw Hines Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. So here we go, fourth down and 12. The ball at the 19 yard line. It's Pyro in motion. Gallagher is going to go back and throw the ball into the end zone. This is Pratt. Touchdown. Touchdown. Wow. You said don't throw it, Tony. I would not have thrown it, but guess what? <laughs> Gallagher delivered Gallagher again. To Pratt. The unlikely scenario of putting it up with 1.35 to go. Touchdown, Laurel Highlands from the 19-yard 19. 19 line. Yes, sir. With 1.35 to go here in the fourth. Gallagher to Pratt for the score. Impressive. I would not have thrown the ball there, but you know what, Garrett, really, when you look at it. They were going to call timeout anyway. Well, but it's almost like a pun in a sense because – if they pick it off, you're going to bring it out at the 20 anyway. So, I mean, it's not bad. So, Radcliffe kick, good. 27 to 7. Mustangs on top with a minute 35 to go here at homecoming of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. A lot of the fans have cleared out. Elvis has just left the building. The Mustangs will need to kick it away one more time. With 1.35 to go here, we'll take this opportunity to thank all of our sponsors here on the South Union Township Sports Network, the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown, Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis & Davis, Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, all of the supervisors at South Union, Jason Scott, Rick Vernon, and Bob Schiffbauer, Southwest Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalop and White, and UPMC Centers for Rehab Services in Uniontown on Wayland Smith Drive. Jim Burns in charge. Yes, sir, Ree, our friend Jimmy Burns. Radcliffe with the run up. And he'll kick it deep this time, down to about the 11. This is White with the spin on the catch. He's going to bring it out. He's Has gone. some room. He runs the Shields hard. Shields will catch up with him. And he goes across midfield and steps out of bounds by the push of the Shields. And with 1.24 to go, West Mifflin will have it trailing 27-7. to And only one timeout. Only one timeout. Kind of a game save, not a game saving, but a touchdown saving tackle there by the Shields. Well, he's the last safety, so that's kind of his job. <laughs> yes, it is. And he did it. So the Mustangs now just trying to get out of here with a win. 27-7 and headed to Leopard Country next week. And we'll try to get a tall score. task with the Belvern and Leopards stacked this year. All kind of talent. We'll try to get a score for that game before we get off the air here. Go check our boy Brian out. And now we're going to have a sack way back inside the 40-yard line. And all the way back there making that tackle for the Mustangs. Number 55, Billy Barton. I'm sorry, Jaden Tucker. Jaden Tucker. Jaden Tucker, I'm sorry. Looked at my roster a little <laughs> too far up. But Tucker with the sack. Nice job there by the sophomore. And able to get through that big offensive line. And we were worried about them struggling, but they've done a fantastic job. They've had heat on McMillan pretty much all game long. 
Now this is going to be a sweep around the left side and keeping him in bounds there with the tackle. Guess who? That our player of the game. That's who. <laughs> Monte that's Kiss. He's been everywhere. That's exactly who. Our player of the game. Doesn't look like West Mifflin's going to call another timeout. They're just going to let it run yeah. down. So with 18 seconds to go, should be the last play of the ball game. Yes, sir. Re. McMillan in the shotgun. Throw it out here to the left, and the two, two West Mifflin <laughs> players collide. That's going to be an incomplete pass, I believe. So, I think they're going to. Now, I think they're going to call a catch, but I don't think it's going to matter. It's going to be the end of the game. Nice play there by Carney, by 2. the way. 2.8 seconds to go. Now they're going to start it, and that's going to end the ball game with the Mustangs. Accomplishing their fifth win of the game of the year, five and zero oh for the Mustangs, twenty-seven to seven. Gary Frank Hauser, along with Tony Anula and Jerry Dupay, will be back to wrap things up and tell you all about it here on the South Indian Township Sports Network. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Sometimes good people make bad decisions, and they end up in trouble with the law. Hi, this is attorney Mark Mahalov of Zebley Mahalov & White in Uniontown. If you're one of those people who found yourself facing legal issues, including minor criminal offenses, traffic, DUI, or other summary offenses, we are here to help you. Many times, these mistakes don't have to ruin your life. One bad decision does not make you a bad person. Let us help you fix the problem and move on with your life. Call our office today at 724-439-9200. Zebley Mahalov & White, your local attorneys helping local people. If you made a bad decision that has you in legal trouble, make a good decision now by allowing our firm to represent you. Zebley Mahalov & White in Uniontown and at zeblaw.com. Zebley Mahalov & White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us fix your life. Zebley Mahalov & White. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Law Islands boys football team and their coaches on having a successful football season this year. service get taken out of service industries. It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott.
Welcome back to Mustang Field. The Mustangs victorious tonight, 27-7 over the West Mifflin Titans, going to 5-0 on the season and 2-0 in conference play. Recapping the second half scoring, the halftime score was 14 to nothing, and it looks like the Laurel Highlands Mustangs were in complete control, but on a botched punt, West Mifflin was given good field position and did take advantage after a 16-yard run by White. He was able to take it in from one yard out, and the kick being good, made it 14 to seven at the 127 mark of the third quarter. Thereafter, though, it was Rodney Gallagher once again dynamically putting the Mustangs back in business, going 69 yards on a run down to the three-yard line. But after being pushed back, it was third and nine from the uh, third and goal from the nine-yard line, and Gallagher hits the shields on the fade pattern from six yards out. The kick was no good, and it was 20 to seven, Laurel Highlands. The Mustangs' defense stiffened throughout the remainder of the game were able to prevent West Mifflin from putting any further points on the board. And the Mustangs, with 1.35 to go in the fourth, put up another touchdown as Gallagher hit Pratt in the left corner of the end zone for the final score of 27-7 with the kick being good by Radcliffe. And Tony, the Mustang defense had to be stern tonight. They spent a lot of time on the field, but they were up to the task and... Uh, it's amazing. The Mustangs are 5-0. and Well, my buddy Pons just texted me and said they're not your father's Mustangs anymore. So that's <laughs> uh, they were impressive tonight. And it, tell you what, offensively, as we said, Gallagher with a nice job. But defensively, I mean, you got to have a couple standouts there. You had Pratt had a nice game. DeShields had a nice game. Your check, an exceptional game. And as we said, really, our player of the game for as many hits as he had was DeMonte Kiss. I mean, they played fantastic defense. They held West Mifflin to 178 total yards, and that's a that's a nice feat considering over the last two years that West Mifflin had scored over 90 points against them the last two years. So good job by the Mustangs here tonight to pick up their fifth, fifth victory of the year. And uh, the statistics, even though uh, West Mifflin was on the field offensively for a, a lot of the game, their statistics are not really that impressive. And the most telling statistic was the penalties. 14 penalties for 120 yards, and also you can throw in those four turnovers. That's right. Uh, they had three fumbles and an interception, and actually the Mustangs could have had a few more interceptions if they could have Pulled just those kept, down, them, yeah. Yeah, kept them in their hands. But, uh, yeah, Mustangs defense just played fantastic. So congratulations to Coach Colazar and his Mustangs. So give us those final stats. Tony. All right, we'll go offensively for the Mustangs. Rodney Gallagher passing was 11 for 22 for 106 yards. He had three touchdowns, one to Keandre DeShields from six yards on his only catch. Jaden Pratt had a 19-yard touchdown catch, and DeMonte Kiss with a four-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. Uh, C.J. Soltis came in and threw one pass, but it was incomplete. Keandre DeShields, one catch for one touchdown, six yards. Matt Lucas, a catch for two yards. Tajay Hooper, two catches for four yards. Joe Chambers, two catches for 35 yards. Jaden Pratt, Three catches, 37 yards, and a touchdown. And DeMonte Kiss, two catches for 22 yards and a touchdown. Gallagher rushing-wise, 17 rushes for 118 yards, and he had one touchdown on that one-yard plunge. That's even no. more impressive because he did take some negative yards when yes. they were trying to run the, <laughs> run the clock down. So Every those, bit of. Yes. Ben Wilson, three carries for five before his injury. Jaden Pratt, two carries for two yards. And Daniel Carney. In a substitute role, 10 carries for 45 yards. The Mustangs ran 54 offensive plays. They had 170 yards rushing, 106 yards passing for a total of 276. As we mentioned, only one turnover on the lost fumble by Gallagher. And they had 14 penalties for 94 yards. For West Mifflin, Tayshawn McMillan had eight, cat, eight passes, eight completions on 12 attempts for only 33 yards. He did throw an interception. His receivers were Del Rico White had one catch for seven. Tyrese Ogletree had one catch for three. Carlos Scott, four catches for 17 yards. And Andre Spencer, two catches for six yards. Rushing-wise, Tayshawn McMillan, 10 carries for 54 yards. Tyrell Ogletree, 14 carries for 53 yards. Delron White, four carries for 19 yards and a touchdown on his one-yard plunge. 
And Del Rico White had four carries for 19 yards to match his brother. Four carries for 19 yards for each of them. West Mifflin, 44 plays, 145 yards rushing, 33 passing for a total of 178. They had four turnovers, and more importantly, they had 14 penalties for 120 yards of penalties. So that was the big difference in the game. And the Mustangs able to solidify a nice spot coming in 5-0 and and going into a big game next week against the Leopards. Entertaining at times, ugly at times, but the uh, result is all that matters. 27-7, to the Mustangs prevail. Held on to the ball when they needed to. Stopped the West Mifflin offense when they needed to and come out with the 27-7 victory. So tonight's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring the supervisors, Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, everyone at CU TV with Gary Smith and his staff. Gary Frank Kauser, Tony Anula alongside Jerry DuPay on the camera. Another South Union Township sports presentation. The final once again, Laurel Highlands 27, West Mifflin 7. Good night, everyone.